Hello, hello. Welcome to Spindle TV. I'm Lenny Shaughnessy, and we're going to try this again tonight. Uh, we're going to try to have a class. Last night we had a little bit of issues, and uh, it didn't go so well for us, or for me at least. <laughs> so uh, tonight we're going to uh, we're going to try again. Uh, I didn't get the link out there for people, so I'm posting that link on Facebook. Um, and, uh, we'll see if that, uh, works for us at all. And everything looks so good with our numbers and all that stuff. So thank you all for joining me again. Uh, welcome Brooks and Mike and all that stuff. Uh, let me see if I can, um, stream... Stream URL. I guess that would be that one. Let me see if I can post this again. <laughs> I'm sending data. Okay, I don't know what's going on. Everything checks out. I am sending data. Everything is sending fine, but I'm still getting buffering, guys. Uh, so we're gonna keep this. Uh, we're gonna keep this going, and uh, we're gonna get through this damn class tonight, one way or another. I don't know what YouTube's doing to me, uh, but uh, it's killing me. All right, uh, but I've done everything that I'm supposed to do. All my settings are set correctly. I don't know why it's still buffering, but we are uh, we're moving now, and it says I have an excellent condition, and every bit of my stream keeps saying excellent condition, but it was still buffering when it was saying excellent health, excellent health, excellent health. I was still buffering. I don't know why. I don't know why. But we're not buffering right now, so... We're going to go. Yeah, I'm going to hang in there, Robert. Uh, man, almost it's kind of one of those things you just want to give up on. Uh, but uh, we're, we're moving along. So while we're moving along, let's get into class and hope that uh, things go well. I'm going to keep an eye on everything. But I don't know why my stream is saying I have excellent health and bitrate and all, but it's still buffering every once in a while. Don't know. I don't know. Uh, but... Right now it's all working. So let's go. Um, let me get into our file. And uh, yeah. All right. All right. All right. And just to um, let's switch over to screen two. Screen two again, no data. It's doing it again. And that put me down here. All right. And, you know, one of the things is, um, you know, I'm always want you know making sure that my speeds and everything are good, and all. I only need upload speeds of four gigabytes to stream. Anything above that, I can stream multiple, right? My download streams, I'm close to a thousand. Uh, I believe I'm in the high 800s, uh, 866. On my upload, I'm uh, because I am streaming live right now but I'm still ringing out 32 megabytes a second and I only need four, four megabytes for YouTube streaming. So I have the internet speeds. I pay lots of money for the internet speeds. So I don't know why I'm buffering. It's not the internet speeds. Um, they are exactly, you know, uh, 
what I'm paying for. And we're a little low, lower than a thousand on the download, lower than 40 that I pay for because I am actually streaming live. So that's pulling some of it. But I have the speeds. It has nothing to do with the internet on my end. I don't know why it's, uh, I don't know why why it's doing what it's doing it's just doing it because it wants to aggravate me to death <laughs> all right let's um let's get going here uh while we are going good things do look okay and hey uh we'll get through this last night we were talking about before things got crazy and all uh we're gonna finish up the build of the chess set um, and on the chess set build, I went ahead and did a 3D rendering of that uh, on what my goals are, what my, you know, the, the plan was for all my sizes and stuff and the things that I need. And the one um, thing that... Uh, I started to talk about was the drawers in the joinery and all there's gonna be some joinery uh, like miter cuts and things like that that we're gonna have to do off the CNC but for the most part uh, the rest of the joinery and everything we're gonna be able to do on the CNC for the parts and pieces and everything and um, uh, like the drawer sides and, and stuff uh, the front and back that's just a plain board I can cut that down uh, table saw, band saw, hand saw, whatever. Uh, but I could also cut out the parts on that front and back part. Uh, I could cut those out on the CNC too. I could do profile cuts and stuff. I want to try to make as much as I can on the CNC. But uh, the one parts that are going to be uh, a little bit uh, are the miter cuts. We will have to do that. You can go down to Lowe's or Home Depot or any big box store and you can get a little miter box. Uh, you don't have to have any special big tools or anything. 15, 20 bucks or whatever, you can pick up a miter box to cut little miters on the framing that goes around uh, the chessboard. But we're gonna start with the top because we're going to be uh, doing a V-carve inlay on this top. So the board's gonna be walnut. I'm gonna start out with walnut board and I'm gonna actually V-carve inlay the maple in here. Um, and uh, I, I want to, you know, rather than uh, gluing up my maple and walnut strips, taking them over, resawing them, flipping them around, re-gluing them up to create my top and stuff, I actually want to do the top as a V-carve inlay. I want to make this thing on the CNC. And uh, so that's where we're going to start, and we'll kind of reference back to this every once in a while. But uh, we're going to start off with the top. And... What I've got here in my sheets and everything, uh, let's turn off uh, sheets one, two, and three for now. But I have laid out already the squares and all for the maple cuts for this V-carve inlay. And I got to thinking that if I, if I come in and uh, try to do uh, one full glue up, if I do all my pocket cuts and I try to glue up uh, one, cut one sheet out of this, of the males and try to do a single glue up at one time, I'm gonna not get uh, good clamps, uh, in, you know, uh, clamping and it's gonna take some time and stuff and it's gonna mess me up. So my maple females are gonna get cut out at two rows each. I'm gonna have four sheets on the uh, female inlays, or the male inlays, sorry, uh, that's gonna do two rows at a time. So I've got four sheets laid out here in the software for each of the uh, cuts. And let's go back to our main play area. And let's take a look at how I laid this out. So each of the squares, I went with two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Now your play area, you could have a two inch square or two and a half or anything in between, but you know, it's generally between those two uh, sizes, two inches or two and a half, uh, you know, somewhere in that range. And I went with two and a half because the base of my chest pieces, my king is a little under five inches, just a little under five inches. So the base is probably about uh, two and a quarter, two and three eighths inches in diameter. Uh, so I went with a two and a half inch 
square. And I used the array tool, the copy array tool to help me lay out these, um, these squares. And basically, um, I started out since it was the, uh, oh, what am I trying to say? Since it was the, uh, the maple cuts that I'm doing, if this was a maple board and I was doing the walnut, it'd be the walnut cuts, but I'm doing the maple cuts. And so every other square is, you know, going to get uh, V card pocket inlaid. Uh, we're going to do two rows at a time, but this layout was using the array tool, the array copy tool. And so I started out with a single two inch square. And originally, let me turn this off. Let me go over here to the uh, maple, the walnut area. Originally, I started off with the walnut area here, uh, just a single square. And when I put in my part size and my gap and offsets and all, I am, my offset is going to be the left side of one part to the left side of another part. Okay. That's going to create, you know, every other square. So in my case, it's two and a half inches plus two and a half inches for a total of five inches from the left side of the first square to the left side of the second square here. So on my X, this would be an offset of five inches. Okay. And then from the bottom of this square to the bottom of the next row squares, that would be two and a half inches because I'm only going up one row. Uh, I'm going a total of, you know, eight rows and eight columns. Uh, and um, the displacement is how far I need, you know, these rows laid out and everything. Uh, and, um, you know, total, there's going to be eight rows, eight columns, right? And so that's what I have is eight rows, eight columns. But if I do that with this particular layout here, I'm going to, uh, it, it's going to throw off because uh, I only really need four of the squares, right? Four for each row because the maple are going to be the other four. So this should be four columns, eight rows. And my displacement, because it's going to step over back and forth over by one square, the displacement is going to be two and a half inches, the size of my square. Uh, so if I were to, let me create a, let me take um, this and ungroup it for a minute. And I'm going to select all of these except for this one. And I'm going to hit delete to get rid of them. Okay. And if I copy this over, it's going to create that grid. Okay. All right. That's the grid of all my walnut pieces. All right. Now for the maple squares, which are, you know, kind of uh, here, the maple squares and stuff. Um, same thing. Uh, but we're going to be doing, we're going to be moving over one square. Okay. So I created a new layer. Uh, and uh, the maple area, and I did the same thing. Okay. Um, now, technically, uh, if I wanted to, I could have just mirrored those squares. What I mean by that, on the walnut area here, instead of doing the array, I could have taken this whole object here and mirrored it Flipping it horizontally along the center, no copy. I could have flipped it along the center and that would have gave me my maple squares, right? Um, and uh, so that, that's an easy and quick way to do it. I did it with the array tool because I wasn't thinking, you know, and uh, I just did it the way I did the walnut pieces. But technically, if I just uh, mirror it, then I have all the parts. So if I were to... Um, group this together. I'm going to hit group. Oops. Let me close this tool. Uh, if I were to group this together, I'm going to hit G on the keyboard for group and everything. If I were to mirror that group, creating a mirrored copy, flip it horizontally, that would complete my checkerboard, right? 
So I have my walnut pieces and my maple pieces, right? Simple enough uh, to lay out checkers, chess, what have you. Um, so I've got two separate layers and let me undo that. I've got two separate layers here, one for the walnut pieces and one for the maple pieces, okay? And uh, my maple pieces there, let me um, grab this and hit delete on that. There we go, my maple pieces, okay? All right, so then what I did from there is I took each uh, two rows of my maple parts or the squares that were going to make up my maple parts. I took two rows and I selected them and then I copied them to a sheet. Uh, and it was sheet two, three, four, and five, I believe. Um, let's see here. Two, three, four, uh, main, two, three, four. Yeah, two. So four sheets <laughs> of those two squares. Uh, what that did for me is if I can come in here and turn off the play area, I can turn on uh, the um, bum, 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 bum. let's turn that visibility off. All right, let me get back in here. Let me turn these sheets off that I don't need. Turn. That on to make it active. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. So now I've got this. So, like, and on the female cut, you will, it's going to be a V carved toolpath. We're not doing a traditional inlay. We're doing a V carved toolpath because I want strong, tight corners. I want sharp corners. I'm going to stop talking now. We're back. All right. So every once in a while. I... Okay. It's doing it again. Um, so it's telling me I have excellent condition, but it's buffering. Buffering. Stop, go, stop, go. Uh. Okay, so let's see if I can ramp this up a bit, and uh, let's see what happens when I do. We're going to go uh, blank for just a minute. Okay. All right. So... It's buffering and it's telling me I have excellent connection, but it's still buffering. And I'm not sure why. I think YouTube gods hate me today uh, and yesterday and this week and everything. I don't know. I don't know. But I wish they would stop. What I'm trying to say is excellent condition. Stream is healthy. BS. I call BS on it. Okay. All right. Let me know if we're good. Uh, it looks... Nope. We're not good. All right. It's buffer. I can see when it's buffering because I'm watching the same preview you all are, all are uh, and stuff. Uh, let me know if we're... If we're still buffering. So the first tool path that we're going to do is we're going to do the female inlay. And for me, I'm using a 60 degree V-bit for this. I'm following their instructions. I'm following their instructions. I'm doing everything they say I should be doing. I have the speeds. YouTube. 
have a meeting with me. Let me know what's going on there. All right. Um, anyhow. The female inlay, I'm using a 60 degree V-bit. Now you can use a 90 degree V-bit, 60, 22, I don't care. As long as you use the same V-bit for the female cut and the male cut. Now for me, I'm going with, uh, since I'm using a 60 degree V-bit with a quarter inch diameter, my maximum cut depth, my cut height of my cutter for that bit is 0.21 inches. So I'm gonna set my flat depth to 0.2 just under that maximum cut depth. And uh, my female cuts are uh, going to get calculated with that zero start depth, 0.2 flat depth, that limit. I want it to flatten out at 0.2. Now we're gonna get a uh, message about um, overlapping or intersecting because the corners are touching uh, in our vectors here. The corners are touching, so we're gonna get that message about overlay and uh, just click continue anyway. And so when we preview this cut for the female pocket, okay, and I'm just using the V bit, there's no need for me uh, to do, to change bits to uh, do a end mill on that flat area, but I can if I wanna change, if it doesn't bother me to change from one bit to another. I can do on my flat areas, I could do an end mill, uh, but it doesn't matter to me if, um, if I'm using the V-bit for it. Uh, most V-carve inlays, unless it's a really big area and stuff, I won't do a bit change, I'll just use the V-bit. But let's kind of compare that on times because it really comes down to time, right? Uh, so I'm gonna go back into this toolpath here and I'm gonna add a flat area clearance tool. And the flat area clearance tool is going to be, for me, uh, I'll use the um, eighth inch end mill right here. And uh, offset is fine. I'll calculate this and continue anyway. And if I were to look at my times, now my times are based on my speeds and feeds, my machines and things like that. Um, you know, with the eighth inch end mill and the V cut to do that 20 by 20 area, it's showing about three hours, uh, you know, two hours and 52 minutes on the end mill. Well, let's look at that end mill and see why. And I think it's going to be because the number of passes I have set up for the end mill, uh, it's doing an eighth of an inch per pass. And, uh, that's, you know, half the diameter of the bit or less, but I can actually, you know, it's not doing a whole lot. Um, I could uh, take a deeper cut on this. I could go 3 16 0.1875. Um, and that would bring that speed down, or that time, not speed. Uh, that'd bring it down to about an hour and 23 minutes. You know, I can shave some time off of that uh, for that cut. Now, I could also use my larger end mill and smaller end mill. I could added uh, you know add more bits to it if I wanted to so let's take this and add in a quarter inch in mill just showing you all these things we can add multiple bits in here uh, in things and if I'm gonna be on my quarter inch bit if I'm gonna be doing a majority of the work then my smaller bit I can do that in a full pass okay so I'll set that to a full pass and um, We'll uh, calculate that. And so now I've got three bits doing it, my quarter inch, my eighth inch, and my V bit. And if we look at the time, you know, uh, we've uh, still about an hour and 43 minutes with my quarter inch end mill. If I look at the settings for my quarter inch end mill, uh, I'm taking an eighth of inch per pass. I can go a little bit more aggressive with that. I can go three sixteenths. Um, I'm not gonna take the full quarter inch plunge. I'll go 3 sixteenths. And let's see what that brings things down to. So shave another 30 minutes off. So I can get it done in about an hour. 36 minutes for the main clearing, six minutes for the eighth inch bit and 20 minutes for the V carve, right? 
I'm happy with that. Uh, I do have to do two bit changes, but hey, if it's gonna save me from two and a half hours or two hours and 45 minutes or whatever to an hour, uh, then I'm changing bits, right? So it's all about uh, you know being timely and efficient and things like that. Uh, so for my speeds and feeds, you know, uh, for the speeds and feeds we run, and we're not, you know, it's not a big commercial four eight where I'm running, you know, 200 inches, 230 inches a minute. Uh, you know, I'm running, you know, my uh, speeds for my bits, which is ranging from 45 to 75 inches a minute, somewhere in there. Uh, so I have a quarter inch end mill that's going to do a majority of the pocket work, followed by the eighth inch end mill that's going to only be doing these four corners. It's kind of useless uh, to uh, even change to the eighth inch end mill for those little bits of work. Uh, and then the V bit, of course, is doing all the edge work, right? So I could eliminate that eighth inch end mill. It's not really doing me any good. Uh, the V bit can kind of take over. So I want to, one more time, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to remove the eighth inch end mill. I'm going to calculate this. And I should be somewhere right about the same time. Uh, 58 minutes so I actually reduced it even more by taking out the eighth inch bit it wasn't necessary right 36 minutes on the V car 22 minutes or uh, on the uh, end mill 22 minutes on the V car so sometimes having that extra bit in there doesn't so I've got my female cuts cut depth is 0.2 okay and we are streaming Buffering, streaming, buffering. We'll get through it. Okay. Now, I broke the male cuts into sections of two rows at a time so that I can do those glue ups one at a time. Um, that way I'm not trying to do a large glue up uh, and get clamps and everything on and all that stuff and take the chance of my glue drying out and not me not having a good inlay. So I have uh, created three, uh, four separate boards. Uh, these boards are about 21 and three quarter, I'm sorry, 22 inches by seven and a half inches. Um, and uh, uh, I could probably do uh, 22 by seven and a quarter, uh, typical one by eight, but I'm going seven and a half. Now, if we come in to this active board, just copying and pasting the rows on there, no good. We have to, just like any V-carve inlay, we need, for the male cuts, we need to create a boundary around our material, okay, or around our object that we're carving. So it gives it that raised effect. It doesn't have to be around the material, around the object we're carving. For the mill and then we have to mirror the mill so we're gonna flip it horizontally we don't want to mirror copy flip it about job center horizontally we need to flip it it's like a sandwich bread you know we've got our male here a female here and we want it you know when those two parts go in together and they glue together so if i just carve this part Now it's saying I'm not sending any data. Why not? About to cover, and I don't know if we're gonna be able to get through this this way because it's gonna be ear. Okay, I do the see the same stream you guys are seeing, so uh, I know when it's buffering. There's no need to you know remind or show me in the comments. I appreciate it, but. I can see it too. Uh, I'm just as frustrated as y'all are. Um, I uh, I know exactly when it's buffering, uh, so we uh, you know we don't need to fill up all the comment sections with buffering, frozen, buffering, frozen. I know it is, and it's driving me crazy, uh, and it's probably driving y'all crazy. Um, one thing that uh, I will say is we can get I can get through this and all. It's going to be recorded, and the recorded version that you go back and watch. I don't think it buffers in the recorded version. I'm not sure. I got to go back and look at that myself and see if that's 
true or not. I don't think it does. It might. I don't know. But, um, yeah. YouTube is shitting on me uh, the last couple of nights, and I don't know what to do about it. Okay. So, the um, mail, once we mirror it and flip it and everything, uh, this is going to be a V-carved toolpath as well. But this V-carved toolpath, we are going to require a start depth and a flat depth, and the two numbers are going to determine how much of a glue gap, when the two parts fit together, how much of an airspace or a glue gap is going to be between them. And I don't want a big glue gap. So my start depth is going to be a higher number, uh, 0 0.17, 0 0.18. And my flat depth is going to be a lower number, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, you know, something like that along those lines. So in my case, I always go with a 0.18, start depth and a 0.02 flat depth um so the uh total of the start depth and flat depth have to equal the total of my female pocket which is 0.2 so 0.18 plus 0.02 is 0.2 that's all that matters i could go start depth of 0.1 flat depth of 0.1 right it totals 0.2 but that means i'm going to have a wider glue gap between the two parts where they fit together and I want to minimize that glue gap as much as possible. I want room for glue and all, but I don't want a big air gap in there and stuff, uh, you know, a big pocket of glue in there. So I want a, a large start depth and then a smaller flat depth. Okay. Um, the uh, Blue Knight, the video is not private. It is public. Uh, you might be watching one of my test streams from last night. Okay, uh, there there were some test streams on the channel that I set to public or private while I was testing, but this stream is public. Uh, it's set to public, so uh, you should be getting it. Um, so when we calculate this toolpath, we have our border selected with it as well, so that when it cuts the part, it's going to do the raised portion, okay? And then the V cut portion and everything, and we're gonna be left with this part. Now this part is gonna be much more manageable for me to get into my board and glue up and get clamps on it and everything. Uh, and uh, I can do one section at a time. So I've got four boards like this. They're, each rows are gonna be different. Uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, have four separate glue ups on this uh, to get this um, this part cut. So uh, my main uh, play area board, which is the first two rows here, uh, that one is done. So in the sheets, I'm going to go to uh, playboard number two, make it active. Now on playboard number two, uh, I've actually already mirrored this one. Um, when uh, earlier when I was uh, looking at things and all I went ahead and mirrored it I don't know why I happened to be in this board when I did but it's already mirrored it's mirrored from what it should be and so I don't need to mirror that one all I have to do is create that uh, copy and so I'm going to go into the V carve toolpath and in this case I was playing around with the 0.17 or 0.18 and I'm gonna go 0.18 just like the other one and 0.02 um, either one of those sets of numbers, 0.17 and 0.03 or 0.18 and 0.02, either one of those uh, will work just great. Uh, so I'm going to go the 0.18 and the 0.02 for the flat depth. Calculate. Continue. Now notice I'm using, um, on this, I'm using an eighth inch end mill to do the flat work uh, and uh, to clear out all that area around those parts. And uh, I just want, I'm using the eighth inch email because I really want to kind of get around there as um, best as possible and all. So if we, let's continue this. If we close this, if we go back to the main play board and we look at that tool path, that one's using the quarter inch. Well, why are you using one versus the other? That's because the quarter inch is the one that I actually want, not the eighth inch. <laughs> so 
let's go back into uh, Playboard 2 and change that to my quarter inch and in I don't know why I had the eighth in there uh, but we do want to we do on this one want a flat area clearance tool for sure quarter inch and in will be just fine I don't know why I'm using the eighth or why it was set that but uh, so this will be board number two okay so this will be the toolpath for uh, or the mel version of for board number two okay so we've got that there all right, and then we can switch over in our sheets to sheet number three. And now sheet number three, I have not done anything with, so I need to create my boundary. Select the boundary and the vectors inside, and I need to mirror them. Flip horizontally. My toolpath, rinse and repeat, B-carve toolpath, Start depth of 0.18, flat depth of 0.02, quarter inch and 60 degree V-bit for my two tools. Calculate. You're going to get that warning about overlaps and inlays because the corners are just touching on all the squares. Okay, so just click continue anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Ronnie. I appreciate that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I appreciate you all. Uh, I do, I do. All right, so that one's done. And then finally, let's go to number four. Draw in our boundary. Select our boundary and our inner rows there. V carve toolpath, same process, calculate. Okay. Now, the um, preview that visible to us. Now, each of these toolpaths are separated by the sheet that it's on one, two, three, and four. They're not uh, compiled together, so I can look at the toolpath for sheet two, three, four, so on and so forth. And as I pull up those toolpaths, when I save them, I'm gonna give them a name, you know, uh, uh, board one, board two, board three, board four, it's because I wanna glue them up in that order because the rows are going from the bottom to the top and everything, so I don't get things mixed and matched and all that good stuff, right? Uh, which probably wouldn't hurt anything because every other set of rows are the same, you know? But still, I'm not. I'm gonna make sure that when I'm carving these, that I keep things organized to make life easy on me. Because as you can tell, life isn't easy on me with these YouTube buffering. <laughs> All right. So uh, the inlay work is done, and that's going to create. Uh, that's gonna finish the top. Now I want to go back to that top sheet, which is the main board, uh, my main play area here. And I want to talk about this setup of this sheet. Now, this is going to be 21 and 3 quarters by 21 and 3 quarters by a half inch thick. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, by 3 quarter inches thick. Right. That's my going to be my top. And um, uh, the reason why I want that is I want a little bit of a border around the edges and everything when uh, the all the all the said and done and everything gets carved and inlaid and all that uh, in the play area I want a let's uh, take this and let's give this a color here I'm gonna make it fake it till we make it make it look like maple there um, but uh, I want this uh, play area here because my trim my little corner trim that's going to go over this edge and everything, uh, it's going to go just right up to the uh, squares here, just right up to those edges. If we look at the, uh, the uh, let me change the color on this. Bear with me to make it easier and visible for you guys and girls. 
Let's go with kind of a yellow color. All right. And uh, it's going right up to the edge of that play area. So it's going to go uh, around uh, that edge and side and everything that corner trim piece all the way around and we're gonna have that mitered frame um, you know all the way around let's uh, edit unhide all there we go and uh, you know it's I'm gonna do a, a walnut trim on it as well and all now speaking of walnut trim and everything that's going this is going to be the next parts that we're making okay this is going to consist of some rabbit cuts uh basically we're going to take a, it's going to be a pocket cut if you will and we're going to kind of groove out so if i were to uh let me select this part here and move it move over there okay and let me move it over here and zoom into that on the screen. All right, let me flip this part. Oops, wrong way. Nope, wrong way. Come on now. Flip along the blue back. There we go. Basically, I'm going to have a board. We're going to have a board, a square board, and we're going to do a pocket cut uh, in, uh, in that square area. And then we're going to profile cut these strips out. Okay. So out of a wide board, we're going to go ahead and uh, do a pocket cut uh, to remove the material. And then we're going to cut our, our strips and all. Uh, we're going to have multiple pocket cuts and all to create these different strips. And we need four of them. And uh, on their size, let's come over here. They are, uh, I believe they are seven eighths. But yeah, seven eighths. Um, uh, tall and also let me hit escape uh, and that's going to be an inch and an eighth wide okay seven eighths by inch and an eighth okay one and one eighth all right so that's going to create our trim pieces okay Wonderful. Now our pocket area is basically um, going to be, as soon as I click here, uh, it's going to be about five eighths, inch, five eighths of an inch deep, okay, on that cut. And the pieces themselves are going to be three eighths of an inch wide. Let me make sure, let me get off of a corner there. From here to here, should only be a quarter. Yeah, quarter inch and a quarter inch. Okay, cool. All right wonderful all right so these are the parts we're gonna make next now um, these parts need to be at least um, uh, 12 22 and a quarter uh, we got to cut off the ends so at least 24 23 to 24 inches in length uh, the strips need to be so that when we miter cut, we end up with a 22 and a quarter inch piece, you know, for each corner. All right, cool beans. I know that's confusing, but let's get over to Vetric and let's do it, right? All right, so first things first is uh, in our sheets here. Uh, let's go back here. Um, I'm going to uh, currently turn off uh, the mail inlay boards hide the visibility of those uh, as well as the uh, play area um, Once I create a new sheet, so we're going to add a new sheet now this one is going to be what I'm going to cut those strips out of and um, I only need four of them uh, and uh, An inch and an eighth uh, times four is going to be four and uh, Or actually uh, four and a half right uh four and a half inches so i only need a one by five one one by one by five board or something but i'm gonna go with a one by six i want some room to play right um and everything so let's start off with our sheet we're going to call this our corner trim 
corner. Trim. And uh, and I said a one by, but it needs to be one inch thick, right? So um, the corner trim, where'd it go? It's up here. I'm gonna edit the size of this. It is going to be uh, 24 inches in length, I'll go, 24. Um, we're going to, uh, let's go one by six, which is five and a half inches wide. And uh, I'm gonna go, I need at least seven eighths, so I'm gonna go one inch thick on that. And I'm gonna click okay. Cool. All right, now of course, I could take this over, I could take these strips, right? Uh, seven eighths inch thick strips uh, cut by one and eighth inch wide. I could take them over to my table saw and I could put a dado groove in, a dado bit set in, I could put a single bit in and I could cut that groove myself. I could take it over to my router table, put an end mill in, set my fence properly and cut that groove into this, you know, each of these strips, right? And then do the miter cut. I can do all of these things on other tools and, and, and everything that might be more quicker and more efficient if I have those tools in my shop, um, which I do. Uh, but some people may only have just the CNC. So I'd like to show you the approach that you could do to make the parts on the CNC. If you don't have things like a router table or a table saw or a band saw or a drum sander and things like that, right? So that's why we're doing it. That's the whole purpose is, you know, hey, you might have bought a CNC to be able to make signs and all and you want to be able to do other things, but you just don't have the other tools. Uh, all you need is a little hand saw uh, or a skill saw, very inexpensive uh, skill saw to cut your boards down to the width and the length. And then we can take them over to the CNC and we can make these parts. Uh, yes, it would be more efficient to, and quicker to do them on the table saw, to do them on a router table uh, and things. But let's make them on the CNC because let's assume that's all we got in our shop, right? That's why I'm doing this. Um, and... Uh, so, you know, for some of you that are like, man, why would I make those on the CNC when I can take them over to my router table or my, and knock them out on my, you know, uh, cut the strips out on my table saw and knock them out on my router table, right? And that's a good question to ask. It's, there is no reason why. The reason why is assuming that uh, the individual that's watching this may only have just the CNC and I want to show them how to make it on the CNC, right? Okay. All right. So let's go back and uh, we've got our corner trim board here. And uh, we're gonna start off with our rectangle uh, here. And the um, rectangles that we're gonna be drawing, uh, they're gonna be for our pockets, right? So we know, but I wanna draw out kind of the outline and everything. So we know the width is one and an eighth, right? 1.125 1 uh, and let's put this up in the corner here. So this would kind of represent, this boundary here would kind of represent one of my parts, right? One of the strips, okay? And within this strip, the width before the pocket is a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna take a guideline uh, and I'm gonna drag it down here and I'm going to uh, create a relative guide down. It's gonna be a negative number or uh, an all, so negative 0.12. Uh, no, uh, 0.25, a quarter of an inch. All right. Now this guideline here, let's get rid of that one. This guideline here is going to represent that one leg. You know, we got that V shape, right? So that quarter inch width on that leg. Okay. And then there's going to be the pocket. And then the bottom of the material that we leave left, that's going to be the quarter of an inch on that. So that nice cut there. Okay. All right. So from here, uh, from this line and all, uh, I'm going to create a, another rectangle. Now this rectangle, uh, I'm gonna first and all, first and foremost, let's close this tool for a minute. Let me zoom in here. Let me do something real quick. Let me turn off that play area. All right, cool. Let's size this rectangle up properly. Now, on this rectangle, I want this pocket, because I'm gonna be pocketing this out, I want it to overlap my material just slightly, because when that quarter inch end mill is coming in here and pocketing this, or half inch end mill, or three eighths, whatever you want, right? 
uh, when my end mill goes past the edge, I want it to go past the edge to give me a nice clean edge here. So I want to, you know, be able to go just past the edge. If I don't, then I'll end up with a little radius there that I'll have to chisel away and all that stuff. So now when I size this out, okay, when I size this out, I held the shift key. So when I pull this side out, it pulls the other side out as well. Okay. Now, I also want it to clean up this edge well too. So I'm going to actually pull this down just a little bit, not much. So the bit has to clean up that edge also. This vector that I have selected here is going to represent that initial cut. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Now, I my material right now is one inch thick. My trim piece only needs to be seven eighths. So I'm not going to use mechanical clamps or hold down clamps on this that hold it down where I got clamps in the way. I want to be able to mill this entire surface. Okay, on this board and all. Got a one inch piece of material and I'm going to do a complete pocket cut on the top surface to mill off that eighth of an inch uh, of material to give me my seven eighths of an inch thickness that I need. Okay, you with me? Hopefully you are. So my first tool path on this particular part, let's draw a rectangle, is going to be, I'm gonna create a boundary around the outside perimeter here and I'm going to uh, grab it in the corner. I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to size it in all four directions. Not much. Just a little bit on the edges. Uh, I think uh, let's go a little bit more on this. I'll grab it here. There we go. So I just want it a little bit bigger than my material because I want my bit to come in and be able to clean up all those edges and give me a nice smooth top, right? You can go out wider and all. There's not going to be no clamps in the way. We're going to use double-sided tape, hot glue, whatever your you know uh, uh, clamping option of choice is besides mechanical clamps. We're going to use something, an alternative, so that we have no clamps in our way to surface this, okay? And... Um, you know, uh, whatever you need, whatever your bit needs to be able to get a nice clean cut. Now this cut is going to be a pocket cut. It's going to be removing the eighth of an inch to bring my material down to thickness. This is assuming that I don't have a thickness planer uh, or a drum sander or something uh, and I have a one inch piece of rough sawn stock or whatever and uh, or whatever my thickness is when I go and pick up the lumber. If I go to Lowe's and Home Depot, I'm going to grab, you know, they all they have is three quarter inch boards. So I'm going to grab some of their one inch thick stock, uh, which is a little bit more expensive and all. Uh, but, you know, I'm going to go probably to a, you know, a exotic uh, wood supplier or a sawmill or something. I'm going to get some roughs on because this is going to be walnut, right? So for me, I go to my local Sawyer. Uh, and I can buy my walnut, maple, mahogany, uh, and many other exotic woods and everything uh, from him where I can't run down to Walmart or home, or not Walmart, but Lowe's or Home Depot and do that. So I'm going to find a local sawyer that sells exotic or hardwoods. And uh, I have one locally here that I can buy my wood from. Or there's even mail order wood. I'm not a big fan of mail order wood, but it's possible. Uh, so... Let's assume I have a one inch piece and I just need to mill that off and bring it down to seven eighths. I'm going to use a just the quarter inch end mill. I don't need the eighth inch for this. And I'm gonna do a raster cut, okay? Uh, I wanna cut uh, with the grain uh, and everything and I'm gonna calculate this pocket cut, okay? So that, uh, that first initial tool path, that's gonna mill off that eighth of an inch, okay? Uh, and everything uh, to bring my board down to its seven eighths of an inch thickness, which is what I need, right? Okay, cool. Hopefully y'all are still with me. All right, so two passes uh, to get that uh, eighth of an inch milled off. It's taken a sixteenth of an inch per pass. I want a nice clean cut. And now I have my seven eighths of an inch thick material. Now my vector here, this one here, uh, this is going to be my first pocket cut uh, to start 
for my parts, and I haven't laid out the rest of them yet. I just want to do one uh, to give you a general idea, right? Um, so this one is going to be five eighths of an inch. That's the the depth that I need uh, for that inside of that V, five eighths. So it's going to be 0.625. Get rid of one of those decimal points. And, you know, this is a decent wide area here. Uh, I could use a half inch in mill uh, if I wanted to. I could use, uh, you know, whatever. I'm going to use my quarter inch because I have it in the router and uh, no sense in me changing bits. Um, and we're going to preview that visible toolpath. Wonderful. And of course, I am going to change the pass steps and do it in five passes uh, versus the eight that it's calculating right now because I want to take about an eighth of an inch per pass. All right. So let's get this turned here. So you can already see already, here's my part right here, and we're going to be cutting this part out. So my quarter of an inch and this right here. Uh, does not look to be a quarter of an inch. Seven of eights minus five eights is two eights. Oh, <laughs> I milled an eighth of an inch off, guys. I need to start at an eighth of an inch. I was like, that does not look like a quarter of an inch. You milled that top surface off, that eighth of an inch, right? So I need to start at an eighth of an inch. Uh, if my, you know, if I, my zero is not the same. Uh, and everything. So uh, if the zero is the original zero. So uh, let's recalculate that. And uh, let's re-preview that. So we're going to start. There's that other, there's that additional material, that additional eighth of an inch that I needed to see go away. Um, and by letting the bit clear the ends, uh, it gives me a nice clean cut. So there's my part. You can see it revealing itself right here. Uh, and finally, um, on this part here, uh, we we need to do a, a profile cut. Now, I'm not going to do a profile cut all the way around. I just need to cut, cut that strip right off, you know, and I need to do that four separate times. So imagine, if you will, uh, that I am going to be using a quarter inch end mill. Let's throw a quarter inch bit on here, 0.25. And let's bump it right there. Okay, let's go there. Right? And so uh, this, I want to give myself a little bit of room before my next cut. And my next cut, my next cut. So I'm going to have a little bit of spacing here. Um, and uh, for each of my parts, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this vector and this one. I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag it down. That's dragging a copy down. And I'm going to snap it to the end of that bit right there. Right. That's going to be my spacing. But I want to add a little bit more. So I want to move down on the Y axis relative to where it's at. I want to go down another go another eighth of an inch. Oh, that was positive. It's got to be a negative number, Laney. Negative 0.125. There we go. And that will be the vectors for my second cut. On and on and on, right? So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to, I'm using this bit just kind of as my little cheat guide, right? So I'm going to snap it to the edge of there. And uh, I'm going to select these two vectors again, hold down the control key drag this down and snap it to the edge of that bit, the other edge, and then move it down negative 0.125. Okay, gives me my spacing and it gives me a little extra eighth of an inch, right? And then finally one more time. Now, there are other ways to do this and lay this out, but for the basics and everything, this is a very quick and simple way to do it. Now, here is where I run into my issue. Uh, let's grab it right on the corner here and snap it in there. Is I am just perfect with that eighth of an inch spacing. I'm just perfect on that size of that part. I mean, there is 
I mean, it's like dead on. Uh, so, but I have one, two, three, four. Four parts. That's all I care about, right? I have four parts, so that five and a half inch wide board did it for me with my spacing that I want. The only problem is, is I don't have any spacing on this last piece here, right? What? So, I don't need a full eighth of an inch between these parts. Uh, I, so I'm gonna back these up. I'm gonna move them up a, a sixteenth of an inch, 0.0625, uh, and move that one up. Grab this one, move that up, 0.0625, and uh, that'll be you know equal spacing, you know, for me uh, to give me a little bit of room between each of those parts, right? Just a little sixteenth, not much. All right. Did I lose you? Y'all there? Doing good? Okay. Uh, so, uh, for right now, I'm going to uh, put this. Uh, I'm going to leave it right there. I'm going to try to make sure you can see what vectors I'm selecting. So, on that pocket cut, okay, on the pocket cut. Basically, that same that toolpath there, that's going to be all four of these larger rectangles that go beyond the board and everything. That's going to be those four. So that when it calculates, All right, let's zoom in so we can see what's happening there. Okay. And so uh, that's gonna cut out my four channel pieces. Uh, not cut them out, but it's going to uh, cut uh, create them. Okay. Awesome Blossom. Okay, cool. Yep, Kool-Aid. So far, so good. Don't mention the B word or uh, it might start happening again. <laughs> Don't jinx it. Um, all right, so you can kind of uh, get an idea of where we're going here. We've got those, uh, those parts there and all. And um, now we're going to cut those parts off, right? Now, the thing of it is, the thing I want to make sure of is that the, that when everything is all said and done and everything gets cut out, that I end up with a quarter inch wide here, quarter inch wide part, you know, on these three pieces. I can't have them the way they are right now. Right, right, right. Okay, so the main thing is uh, that my cut when it uh, removes this material my quarter inch bit let's come in here and let's drag that bit in here when that quarter inch bit comes down and cuts I need to make sure that it's cutting on this line right so that makes uh, that gives me my quarter inch part if I'm cutting on you know uh, you know too far over here and everything then I'm leaving that big piece of wood so there's kind of two cuts here that need to get carved. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Okay, glad you do. All right, and so uh, we're gonna have two separate passes, okay? We're gonna cut, cut, and that'll cut that piece free. Remember, we're, we got this held down with two-sided tape. Make sure you got plenty of two-sided tape or tape and CA glue or hot glue, whatever, that when these things start getting released, uh, you can cut them. I, because I'm gonna be holding them down with two-sided tape, I'm not gonna put tabs or anything like this on these. Uh, there's there's no need for it because the two-sided tape is going to hold the parts. So what I want to do is I'm going to come in on this edge here. All right. On this edge here, I want to start a line. And let me snap this right to there. Uh, I'm going to take my polyline tool and I'm going to snap a line right on the center of that quarter-inch bit and straight across, okay? Straight across. Make sure I'm going at 90 degrees. There. 
and notice I went just past the same as it did before I wanted to clear that completely and that is true for this side as well so I want to come all the way to this line out here not the circle that line okay now if I were to take this uh, quarter inch bit and put it up against the edge of this other part I have a center line here as well so I'm gonna hold down my control key I'm gonna grab this line and I'm gonna snap it right to the center of the circle and that's going to give me the uh, the two vectors that I need for cutting that those parts out you with me okay cool now one of these uh, uh, let's see here one of these passes I want the bit to go up and then back I don't need it to go up and then come back and go again I can go up and back right uh, I can do this in two you know kind of uh, back and forth cuts that'll make it a little bit more optimized for me so on one of these lines down here I want to make this the start point so that way when my bit cuts and ends here it moves over to this start point and goes back right and it just kind of uh, works its way around okay cool beans all right now I need to um, I need to do the same, you know, all the spacing and everything here is the same for all four parts. Remember, we spaced them out kind of evenly. Uh, we lucked out on that uh, size and all. But since these are, uh, these are spaced just right, I'm going to take a line. I'm going to draw a line from the bottom of this one part to the top of this other right here. Right. I'm going to take all three of these vectors. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to grab it right on the top of that line. I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to drag it up and snap it to the top of that line. Puts those two lines right exactly where they need to be. I'm going to hold the control key again. Drag that copy down there and snap to that line. Right? So now all I have to do is that little line I was using to help me space those and get them exactly where they need to be. I'm going to delete that. I don't need that vector there. Don't want it in the way. Okay, so now I'm going to, let's get rid of the big pocket vector for a minute. And so I have these two lines uh, that are going to clear out that area. And they're spaced exactly uh, where they should be um, uh, to uh, clean out that area. Right? Right. All right, so let's select those vectors. And it's going to be a profile cut on the line, uh, cutting point eight, uh, 7 eighths, uh, 0.875. I'm going to use my quarter inch end mill. And the number of passes, um, we're going to go... Eighth of an inch. Um, I'm going to do it in six passes on the line. And this is going to be my cutout. Cutout. Right, we'll just call it cutout for now. Calculate. All right. And uh, preview that visible toolpath. And of course, I forgot to start at the eighth of an inch on that. Let's try that one again. We were so close, guys. Uh, point start depth. Because remember, I milled off that eighth of an inch. Uh, all three of these tool paths can be done with the same bit. So I'm going to be touching off my Z, milling off that top surface, cutting the next cut, and cutting the next cut all in one, one swoop, one tool path. So I don't have to keep resetting the Z because the whole surface is going to be milled off. But I do need to start at an eighth of an inch because we milled that that's that first cut okay so there are my four trim pieces for the chessboard now I'm gonna do my trim pieces are gonna be the same uh, trim pieces uh, out of um, walnut I'm gonna do a model walnut uh, because that's what I want you know 
and um, on this just so you know how the pieces get orientated um, here is the uh, seven eighths of an inch side you know that's seven eighths of an inch side and uh, across the top going across the game board is that one and an eighth inch side okay so make sure when you're cutting your miters that you orientate your parts appropriately so they're not, they're not backwards or upside down or anything like that okay cool beans all right cool um, put that back all right so that takes care of that part Blue Knight, did I buffer when I said uh, about the table saw and the miter saw? Right? Did I buffer when I said that these would be more efficient to be cut on the table saw and the router table, not the CNC machine, the router table, uh, or a miter saw or things like that? Um, but we're using a CNC to cut the parts uh, because we're assuming that the person watching does it, all they have is a CNC. They don't have any other, you know, cool tools in the shop like most of us do, right? Um, the miter cuts, you're not going to cut on the CNC. The miter cuts are going to get cut on a little miter box, a little cheap, inexpensive $10 miter box from Lowe's or Home Depot. Going to stick that part in there and use that handsaw to cut that little miter in because they just can't afford to go out and buy a miter saw or a table saw or a drum sander or a band saw or all that stuff. All they have is their CNC machine. That's what this scenario is, right? But yes, it would be more efficient on cutting the strips out on the table saw, taking them over to the router table, cutting the groove, taking them over to the miter saw, cutting the miters, done, right? Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, so that's what that's what the that's the scenario that we're playing, right? Someone only has a CNC. How would you approach these cuts on a CNC? Cool. Awesome. Pretty cool. All right. Now, so those parts are done. So let's go ahead and uh, let me select all of these parts. One, two, three, four. And let's hide them. Those are done. The top is done. Uh, let me select the top. Hold on, got selected. That's not ready to get selected there. Uh, let's hide that. Okay, Ooh, missed a couple of squares there. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, hide those. Okay, so that um, will uh, take us to. The, we have these little corner pieces here. Uh, let's move one of these out. And let's uh, come in here and look at this. Okay. So these little corner pieces, I'm going to do them in maple, right? Um, and uh, we're going to measure uh, from here to here so they should be about a quarter of an inch right and also from here to here they should be a quarter of an inch cool uh, these particular parts overall are uniform um, you know seven eighths and why am I 15 sixteenths it should be seven eighths by seven eighths uh, I'm a little off on my size no problem let me uh, jump in here and Push pull this. Uh, let me bring that in. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's measure that again. Measure from there to there. Seven eighths. Wonderful. All right. So my little corner pieces, and uh, we're gonna need four of those. Uh, they are overall length on these parts are three and seven sixteenths and we need four of those right so we're gonna cut these out in one strip and then we can uh, you know uh, profile cut them apart uh, on the CNC or this would be something we could put in our little miter box with our handsaw and cut those four individual pieces right so that kind of scenario now uh, oops. Um, 
There we go. All right, so those are the four parts uh, next that we need to do. Uh, seven eighths by seven eighths, and my inside cut uh, depth from the top down should be uh, five eighths of an inch deep, right? So um, I don't have any, you know, there's no there's no spare material in this board, right, to cut out those. These are my corners for my top. So let's come over to a new board. Um, let's go to sheets. Let's turn off the corner trim board. Make a new one. This is going to be my little, uh, that first one I called corner trim. I should have called it top trim, but that's all right. Uh, side trim, I'll call this one. Side trim. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll just cut it out of the same uh, size board. No, wait, hold on. Three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. I only need like a 16 inch long board. So let's go in and edit that. I don't need a full 24 inch piece. Um, three, what was my size here? Bear with me a second. Three and seven sixteenths. Okay, cool. All right, so on that, Three and a half times four, three times four is 12, a half times four, so 13. Uh, let's go, I'm gonna go uh, 15. Now let's round it up nice and easy. 16 inches, five and a half, one inch thick. And the reason why I'm doing it on a five and a half board is uh, I can cut other parts out of this board if I need them for anything, uh, you know, while I'm there. Uh, or I can. When it's off, take that off, set it in my scrap bin, and I've got a nice remaining piece. Either way, will do. All right, so side trim. Uh, let's come in here and make that active. Okay, now for this one, uh, again, imagine if you will, uh, we have a quarter inch wide lip by quarter inch wide, right? So if I take a guideline to help me lay out, I'm gonna make a relative guide, negative 0.25, and that'll give me a guide to put my rectangle on. So we're gonna go here, all right? And this rectangle needs to be, um, uh, it needs to be the total overall length uh, from corner to edge is going to be seven eighths. Well, we've already subtracted a quarter here, right? So um, we've got uh, five eighths to go, right? Right, right. So the size of this uh, is going to be um, on the height. It only needs to be 0.625. And the length, I'm going to go a little bit longer. I'm going to go 16.25. Wonderful. And I'm going to drag that up to that guideline. Perfect. All right. So that pocket cut is going to, uh, and I'm only going to mill off, you know how I, the, the, the last board I milled off the whole top, that eighth of an inch. Uh, I'm only going to mill off uh, just this top strip here. I'm going to keep this my full one inch board so I can use it in other projects or something and all. So um, this will be my second toolpath, this vector here. My first toolpath is going to be uh, this vector here that I'm about to size up. We're gonna go there and make it just a little bit wider. Okay, that's good. 
that's going to be that vector right there is going to be my first pocket cut milling off an eighth of an inch off the top of that one inch thick material all right quarter inch in mill calculate and that's going to mill off that eighth of an inch to give me that seven eighths that I need in height okay my second tool path is going to be this vector here that's starting a quarter of an inch in it's going to be a pocket also starting at an eighth of an inch and my overall cut is five eighths and that's what I need so it's starting at an eighth and it's cutting down five eighths point six two five lord of mercy point six two five uh, quarter inch end mill calculate okay preview that visible toolpath <laughs> all right how deep can you cut uh, and speed on your machine with wood? How deep can I cut? I can cut through two and five eighths inch thick material. I only have a five inch Z height clearance, so I can cut through two and, I'm sorry, two and three eighths inch thick material I can cut through. And my rapid speed on my machine is uh, 200 inches a minute, uh, but we bring it down to uh, operate between 45 to 100, 150. You know, that's kind of the mid range. Uh, but uh, that's, you know, but uh, I can cut two and three eighths inch deep material. So we're carving uh, five eighths inch thick there. All right. And so you can see the part there. All right. Now, um, the final cut on this part here would be the cutout, uh, you know, uh, the profile cut, cutting down this line to cut the part out. Uh, unless you needed to it to cut those three and seven sixteenths inch, you know, links off of there as well. Um, if we do that, uh, we will uh, add some tabs on it uh, just between the parts. Um, otherwise, this part would get cut off. You could take it over and you could measure and with a hand saw, very simply, you could cut those four little pieces. Um, I wouldn't, you know, necessarily uh, do them on, a, on the, the uh, CNC uh, because I don't want to have to add tabs to this. And uh, with the carts being cut out across here, uh, which can, you know, be done, not a problem. Uh, but I need to make sure that I've got on my two-sided tape that it's, it's holding that part in, right? So we're gonna look at it with both scenarios. Uh, so the first scenario is uh, going to be my bit, my quarter inch end mill, cutting the uh, part out, uh, cutting a straight line. Let's get it on the line here, right? And, you know, uh, I'm gonna take a straight line tool, poly line tool, not a straight line tool. And I'm going to find the center of my circle straight across 90 degrees. I'm going to take that line and I'm going to extend it out. Okay. So this would be a profile cut on the line. This one is actually starting at zero. Uh, because there, you know, it didn't, a lot of it hasn't been milled away yet. And, uh, it's going to cut all the way through the material, uh, one inch. And I'm going to do this in I'll do it in seven passes. When we calculate that, <clears throat> that's going to, you know, cut that piece free, right? Well, before that cut gets done, if you want to cut those sections, 
you do that before that final profile cut because once you do that profile cut when these things start coming loose they're going to start coming loose so let's break this up into um, sections here so I'm going to draw a line straight across right here for a minute it's not going to be that long when it's all said and done but that line I'm going to um, move this one move it x positive 3 and 7 sixteenths right so 3.4375 uh inches and uh that's going to be that first piece right i'll be cutting on the right side of the line here okay um and uh technically it's the left side left inside line and uh i'm going to be cutting that line and that's my first piece okay now my quarter inch bit i'm going to have you know that much waste Right, I only need four of these parts, but I'm going to have that much waste uh, before my next part gets cut out. Okay, so this line, uh, I'm going to try to minimize my waste and just cut right on the line. So I'm going to take my control key and I'm going to drag a copy over and snap it over here. Okay, so this is going to be the start of my next piece. Then I'm going to copy and paste, control C, control V, or copy paste right clicking copy paste either one uh, but I use the keyboard shortcuts control C to copy control V to paste now I can move that over my 3.4375 and that's gonna be my second part right so get that uh, and I can uh, all I need to do now is I know I'm moving over a quarter right so I can go uh, control C to copy, Control V to paste. Close this tool first. There we go. Let's try that again. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. And then I can move over 0.25. That's going to be the start of my third piece. And then Control C, Control V, close that darn tool. Control C, Control V, copy, paste. And, uh, move that over my 3.4375 so that'll be the cutoff on that part so my bits gonna be basically cutting between these two lines here on these parts okay so one more time on that uh, scenario control C control V move that copy over a quarter of an inch control C control V move that over my 3.4375 okay now and that'll be the uh, end of that last piece and this will be scrap over here now of course I do not want these lines cutting into my nice block of remaining wood here uh, I want them to kind of end you know this is my part vector right here so they can go a little past the part vector that's fine but I want them to end you know before it gets into my nice chunk of wood so I'm gonna select all of these lines here and I'm going to bring them up to there and the top part I want them to start off a little bit so I'm gonna pull those out okay so now these lines are showing me where the start and the end of my part is cutting right uh, the the start and end of each of those four pieces okay well my bit I want to be cutting in between those lines all right so these were just laid out now I need that center line here okay and uh, basically all I have to do is copy and paste a line over an eighth of an inch to create the center line for each of these uh, so uh, I want it to go cut, raise up, cut, raise up, you know, after, after it cuts all the way through. So I'm going to take my right line here and uh, we'll uh, copy and paste it. And I, actually, I'm not going to copy and paste it. We're not going to do that. That's stupid. Uh, we're going to undo that. We're going to go into the offset tool. 
let's be smart about this. And we're gonna offset it uh, inward an eighth of an inch. Nope, that was the wrong direction. Outward an eighth of an inch. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's gonna be the toolpath line. These lines technically aren't needed anymore, but keep them in there, it doesn't hurt. All right, same thing with this line, offset outward eighth of an inch. Here as well, offset outward an eighth of an inch. All right, this one, we don't need to do that because this gets cut and that's my part there. You with me so far? All right, cool. All righty, uh, let's get rid of all the vectors that don't matter to me right here and here. And so this vector, notice if I go into node editing, here uh, we're starting here and cutting in starting and cutting in so uh, they should all be the same all the way down so I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select make sure my start points are where they want to be now since I'm starting here okay this particular line is gonna be cutting on the left side of the line so left side it looks like the right side it looks like i'm pointing to the right side but the start points here imagine if you were standing here facing this line this is the left side the rest of these are going to be carving on the line okay they're going to be carving on the line down that cut okay you with me all right cool so let's turn off this one for right now these three are going to be cutting all the way through on the line quarter inch end mill. Uh, let's do it in seven passes and calculate. Okay. This one here is going to be a profile cut, but it's going to be cutting on the inside left of the line. Calculate. Now, if we go back in the 2D view and we look that tool, let's turn on the solid view. We want it cutting on that side of the line. So that's the inside left. You always look at the start point and imagine yourself standing in front of that part, looking at that start point, your left, your right, right? So uh, we're on the left side of the line. So if we were to put these in the proper order, uh, our pocket cut uh, would be first uh, to mill off that eighth of an inch, followed by our pocket cut there. And this profile cut would be last in the list. So it would look something along the lines of this for the tool pass. Now all these tool pass use the same bit. So uh, pretty much they can uh, all be run together if you wanted to. Um, but let's, <coughs> let's leave the profile off for right now. And we're gonna have that first eighth of an inch clearing. That's gonna mill that part down to that seven eighths of an inch. Then it's gonna come in and do that five eighths of an inch pocket cut, uh, removing that uh, material to create that L bracket. <laughs> you guys are having a conversation about Martinsville? All right, let's see here. I'll bring the handsaw, Paul Coffey says. Very good. Um, <laughs> all right. So basically what we have here is uh, our four parts have been uh, cut and separated here. Right? Now, um, our final cut, that final profile cut, is going to come in and uh, do that final cutout. So when the final cutout, um, you know, oops, hold on a minute. <clears throat> Let me do that again. Preview the visible toolpath. I clicked undo last too many times. There we go. Um, on these four parts and all, make sure that they're held down. You know, that you got good two-sided tape and everything uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, or as it's you know cutting them out you know uh, make sure that you secure them somehow or another so they don't fly around or anything like that but 
our last piece here on the end is waist and um, you know that leaves us our four corner trim pieces now this would be cut out of maple okay and again uh, guys and girls if you do have tools such as a table saw router table uh, you know miter saws and things like that um, there you know those would be the more efficient tools use your tools for what they're used for and they'd be more efficient to cut out your strips to take them over to the router table and set your height set your fence and mill out that uh rabbit uh you know uh, do that rabbit cut to mill out that rabbit cut and then take them over to a miter saw station and and cut those parts or a hand saw or whatever um but for those of you that all you have in your shop is a CNC and you know uh, you got to do what you got to do, this would be the approach to make those parts, right? All right, so going back to our drawing, our four parts, um, our four corner pieces, uh, this one, this one, this one, and uh, bear with me a second flip this back upside down that one we can hide those because those are done now I'm gonna pull this drawer out uh, let's move this out of the way let's move that drawer out there and um, let's look at uh, these vectors need to go away bear with me a second guys uh, delete that oh not that hold on a second I got some floating vectors in here. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, those were the, oops, those were the remnants of my, um, okay. So what I'm left here is I've got uh, two sides and I'm going to change the color so they're easier to see the joinery uh, first of all let's move uh, one of the sides out here and let's change the color on this one to a uh, lighter color as well so you can see the part and uh, let's close this and click here okay so this piece let me Rotate it for a second. Uh, Q, rotate 90 degrees. Uh, by the way, the program I'm working in here is SketchUp. Uh, it's a 3D uh, kind of design program and all when you're working with uh, designs and stuff. All right, so this part here, very simple part. We're just going to be doing some uh, pocket cuts to create the uh, two sides. Uh, so um, these sides, the top channel, the top rabbit, and the bottom rabbit. So the bottom of the uh, box uh, is going to go in the bottom. The top chessboard, that gameplay area, is going to go in the top. And then we have this groove here for our drawer slides. So the sides of our drawers have this eighth inch notch in it uh, that will uh, be guided on that centerpiece there. So that part's going to be very easy. We need two of these. Uh, these parts are um, four and a sixteenth inch in uh, width. They are uh, twenty one and three quarter inches in length, and three quarter inches thick. Right, easy enough. So a three-quarter inch board. So three-quarter by four and a sixteenth by twenty-one and three quarters. Okay, no problem there. So let's go to our sheets. Add a new sheet. Uh, let's delete that new sheet. Add a new sheet. I don't know why it keeps jumping up there, but uh, oh, it's all alphabetical. I forgot about that. Uh, this is going to be my uh, 
what it's my side pieces but it's my uh, box sides we'll call it and let's edit that uh, on the box sides it is going to be uh, 21 and 3 quarters in length uh, 4 and a 16th inch wide if you don't you know uh, again if you don't have a saw you know four and a quarter is a uh, one by five I believe or one I think I think they make one by fives or is it jump all the way up from one by four to one by six uh, if so that's five and a half inches wide and you can cut you know you can do a profile cut let's do that let's assume that we have a one by six board so we'll go five and a half and uh, three quarters of an inch thick all right okay let's get rid of our guidelines here and on this part our box sides um, Turn off our trim sides and get this zoomed in here. Our box sides and all, our rabbits are um, from the top of the material down. Uh, they're going to be three quarter inches for the uh, top rabbit, and um, the bottom rabbit is going to also be three quarters. The depth of cut uh, is going to. This is an eighth of an inch right here. Uh, and this is a quarter, so three-eighths of an inch uh, deep. And um, so three-quarters on each end is going to be cut three-eighths of an inch deep. Then we have uh, one and a sixteenth inch on both sides here. And they're going to be cut down eighth of an inch deep, and that should leave us our channel. So we're going to have one, two, three, four pockets to do on these pieces. And uh, there are two of them, right? So um, we'll make up two of these. So we'll duplicate them. But uh, I'm just going to draw the vectors on one for right now. So our first vector is going to be uh, three quarters of an inch in height. 0.75 and uh, full length 21 and three quarters and we're gonna snap that there now I'm going to on this edge and the two outer sides I want my bit to be able to clear these parts uh, so I want my bit to go past on the sides but I'm not gonna hold the shift key this time and I just want to pull this out because I want my bit to clean off that rabbit I'm going to take that vector and I'm going to create a mirror copy and flip it about job center and flip it vertically. Okay, that's going to be my two outside rabbit cuts. Okay, you guys still with me? Uh, let's move this over on the board and zoom in so you can see it a little better. There we go. Um, so that's going to be my two outside rabbit cuts. Now, uh, from here, uh, we've got a one and a sixteenth inch height, so 1.0625 in height, um, and let's snap, that one actually gets snapped right here, oops, right up against that, that vector, and I'm going to pull this out to here, because it's already pulled out to there on that side and that one is good uh, i'm going to take that one also and i'm going to mirror it uh, create a mirror copy flip about job center and flip that and that does not look one in the 16th let me make sure it is in size it is one in the 16th all right let me make sure i did my math right or my measurement right Oh, yeah, can't mirror it. Remember my board is only four overall length is uh, four and a sixteenth. Goofball laney. I knew something was throwing me off. I was like, wait a minute, that's too wide in the middle. All right, my, I, we, went, we went with a uh, one by six board. So, uh, very easy enough. Uh, let's take a rectangle and uh, let's draw it 
Uh, 21 and 3 quarters by 4 and a 16th, 4.0625. And um, we're going to snap it up to this top corner here. I'm going to delete these two vectors down here for a moment. Uh, so this is representing my board here. And if you want, uh, we can do it in the center, right? We can do it in the center. That's fine. Uh, let's take this and... Uh, Let's grab snap to the center of the board there. All right, so these two vectors, they're now going to get mirrored across the center of this vector right here. So I'm going to take a center line. I'm going to snap from here to straight across there. So I've got a center line on that, uh, that outside perimeter of that 4 and 16 inch wide. Uh, I'm going to take these two vectors here. I'm going to select this line and I'm going to mirror by flipping about the line. Right? There we go. So there's my two vectors that I need. I can get rid of that center line. I don't need that anymore. All right. So these are the vectors that I need, these four vectors here for my pocket cuts. Let's start off with the two outside cuts. Go back over to our tool pass. So our two outside vectors, they're going to be a pocket cut cutting down three-eighths of an inch. Okay. All right. So that'll create those two cuts there. Okay, wonderful. Uh, the two inside pockets, they're going to be cutting an eighth of an inch deep. An eighth of an inch deep. All right, and then the final cut for this part is going to be cutting the part out. Uh, now, I um, can just uh, do it as a kind of a profile cut. I'll just draw a rectangle, and I'm actually going to snap from one corner of this rectangle to the other corner there. And um, the that was all kinds of wrong. Uh, the ends are fine, but the sides are not. Let's close that and let's hold down the shift key. And this needs to be on this vector right there. Snap to that vector, buddy boy. Snap, snap. There we go. All right. So that uh, part there should be, if I go to the size tool, it should be, oh, I was just off just a little bit. Four and a sixteenth inch wide. 4.0625. All right, and let's center it on the material because everything else is perfect. All right, that looks good. Now that's going to be a profile cut, cutting on the outside of the line this time, uh, cutting through my material, three quarters of an inch. Now, we since it's cutting here, this top part here has been milled down an eighth of an inch. So we can start, there's no sense in carving air for that first uh, pass and everything. Uh, so we can start at an eighth of an inch and we're going to cut down five eighths. Okay, so an eighth plus five eighths is three quarter. Um, outside the line, quarter inch end mill, calculate that tool path. Preview that visible tool path. Wonderful. Get rid of the waste area here. And that is our size. We need two of these. Okay. There's no sense in me creating a new sheet and more tool pass. All I have to do is run this set of tool pass twice. Right. So uh, there's two of these. If I have a longer cutting CNC, like I can cut up to 40 inches. Uh, and uh, now these parts are. Uh, 21 and three quarters, so 
two of them, two sides would exceed my 40 inch cutting area. But if you have a longer machine, you can do them all in one cut and then cut it right in half, right? Uh, but I'm just gonna do this in two separate boards. Um, and uh, so that takes care of the two sides. How we doing? Y'all hanging in there? Um, all right, so the side parts, this side and this side, we can hide those, those are done. Now, as far as the bottom, uh, the bottom is made up of two parts. So we have, uh, let's add some color to this. We have the bottom of the box. It's just a three quarter inch board uh, that is that measures uh, square uh, 21 inches, um, one foot nine inches, 21 inches, yep. And uh, by 21 and three quarters. So 21 by 21 and three quarters. So we're gonna glue up a panel and cut it down three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, that's gonna be our bottom of our box. Uh, the uh, three quarters of an inch thick. All right, so that's gonna be that part. Uh, let's hide that for a moment. Now the base is uh, something optional. I want a base on mine. I'm gonna be screwing little feet and everything in here and stuff. Uh, the base itself, uh, let's give it a little bit of color. The base itself is uh, only, I think it's a half inch thick. Yeah, half inch thick. And uh, it also, uh, it measures a little bit longer, a little bit larger. Uh, it measures um, 22 and a quarter by 20, it should be by 22 and a quarter. So let's go here to here. Yeah, 22 and a quarter by 22 and a quarter square. And that's gonna be the base. All right, so we need two panels uh, on this particular kind of thing. We need two panels. Uh, tw this one's 22 and a quarter by 22 and a quarter. And then the uh, by half inch thick. Um, edit, unhide the last one. And this panel is going to be, oh, I forgot the number again. Uh, 21. Yep, 21 inches by 21 and three quarters. Okay, uh, so that'll be that. Wonderful. And we're lucky. Okay, so that's going to be those two parts. Uh, there's really no tool pass, you know, uh, you, other than if you glue up a panel or something. Uh, you can, if you need to surface it down with your CNC, you can do a surfacing tool bath, but you can just cut it down to size. Uh, or this is something that you can glue up and use a skill saw to cut down the size. Uh, there's really no need to put a part like this on the CNC. Okay. Um, and all. So that takes us to, we're not making the knob on the CNC. Let's uh, explode this. And the knob I can hide. All right, this front panel here. Uh, let me explode this. This front panel here, if I move it. All this is is just a uh, piece that is um, 20 and a half inches in length by a quarter inch thick by three and seven sixteenths inches tall. We need two of those. That's our drawer fronts. And I'm doing those out of maple. Okay. Um, so we're gonna do those out of maple. And if y'all have questions, I know y'all are having a conversation, but uh, I'll uh, go back and read them and stuff. Um, the, uh, so those would be, the, we need two of those. That's our two drawer fronts. And I'm doing those out of walnut. I think, yeah, walnut. Uh, three and seven sixteenths by um, uh, 20 and a half inches by a quarter inch thick. Okay. So we need two of those. Now, let's look at our boxes here. Um, let's, first of all, let's hide this. All right, let's explode this. 
and explode it again. Okay, let's move this one out. All right, now this part here, um, this part has a rabbit cut on the bottom. So we can do we can do our two, our box sides. We need four of these. These are kind of the front and the back, not the box size, the box, the drawer, front and back. Uh, and it has a rabbit cut uh, for the drawer bottom. Okay. Um, the This part here fits into, let me grab this piece and move it out. Spin around so they can see you. Okay, so this part here uh, is going to be rabbit cut on the two ends and then a uh, bottom cut for a rabbit cut on the bottom for the uh, box bottom. And then there's also a dado cut for the center piece uh, to separate the two parts for the, you know, the chest pieces. Now you can go crazy with this on this drawer and you can create dividers for each and every part and all that. Uh, but, um, you know, I've just got two separate dividers here uh, that uh, my parts can go into, right? Or it doesn't even need a middle divider. They could just all go in there, but I kind of want to keep them somewhat separated and everything. Um, but notice uh, uh, from one side of the drawer to that divider, it's wider here because my king and queen are taller than my other parts and everything and then all my pawns will go up into this top section here because they're much smaller parts and all um you know for uh each each player has their own each side of the box has their own uh uh drawer and all for their parts um so the first part uh this one here we're going to call this the front and back okay the drawer front and back we need four of these one, two, three, four. And so the height, let's get some measurements and we'll go over and draw that out. Uh, we've got uh, two and five eighths inches wide, three eighths of an inch thick, and make sure I'm on the end there, uh, 20 and an eighth long. So, so I can remember that. 20 and an eighth long. Let me write that down. Uh, three eighths of an inch thick. And I done forgot the first number. My mind's not that great nowadays. Two and five eighths tall. All right, we need four of these times four. All right. Yep. Uh, the, uh, this is, uh, SketchUp version eight, uh, the free version, and uh, there's still uh, that version eight is still out there for download, digital download and all. Uh, but uh, you want to learn SketchUp? Uh, uh, use the same instructor that I did, Jay Bates, Jay's Custom Creations .com. He has got uh, a whole uh, playlist full of uh, SketchUp training videos and uh, he does very well. I watched uh, his videos and uh, uh, he had about 50 of them. I literally watched them all in a row, had a little marathon and by the time I ended uh, watching, and I've never used SketchUp before, by the time I ended watching his uh, last video, uh, I was very proficient in SketchUp and can maneuver around it and draw all that stuff. So Jay's Custom Creations, J-A-Y-S, CustomCreations.com. Jay Bates, tell him Laney sent you. All right. Um, he's also got a great YouTube channel too. Okay. So in our sheets, we're going to create our next new sheet here. Uh, this is going to be our drawer. Uh... I'm gonna just go uh, fronts and backs. That'll work. Oh, there's enough room to put that A in there. Let's uh, 
Let's go in there. Um, front and back. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to need uh, four of these. They are two and five eighths inches. Uh, so, um, uh, two, four, six, eight, two, four, two and a half, two inches, five. All right, so we're gonna cut it out of a uh, uh, one by six. We'll get uh, two pieces out of a one by six uh, by 24. So let's do that. Um, here we're gonna edit the size of this. So let's go 24. Uh, five and a half is fine. Three quarter inches thick. Uh, these are actually three eighths of an inch thick. So um, if you don't have a planer or a bandsaw to resaw board or anything like that, you can do a surfacing tool path to mill it down to size. Uh, and also, um, Let's go ahead and we'll do this at three quarters. No, I don't want to do that. I want to do it at three eighths. Um, just create a surfacing tool path uh, to mill that down if you have to. But uh, if not, if you have anything uh, that can do surfacing or resawing, or you can even take a handsaw and resaw a board down, it's got to be three eighths of an inch, 0.375. Uh, let's do that. And everything there. And. Um, Oops, dang it. Okay, let's make that active. Let's turn off that. And so our drawer parts, uh, they're going to be two and five eighths inches in height, 2.625. Uh, they're gonna be um, 20 and an eighth inch long. And we need two of these. So I'm gonna hold down the control key and drag out two of these. Now, I've got to, uh, let's bring this one right up to here. And let's bring this one to here. And let's measure between here Wonderful, quarter of an inch. Um, I would not, I, I, I can trust my quarter of an inch bit to cut that out and uh, you know give me the exact size that I need on those two, but I probably end up, I would probably, just in case there's some problems with my edges or anything, I'd probably use an eighth inch, an undersized bit, and I would move these parts in just a little bit off the edge, right? So that way when I do a profile cut, I get a nice clean square cut because uh, I'm gonna be doing my rabbit and everything here. So even though I could run a quarter inch bit down the middle and I'll just in case my edges aren't nice and clean and stuff, I wanna kinda of clean those up. So I'm actually gonna move this in. Um, let's move it on the Y axis. We're gonna go up. I'm just gonna move it in a 16th of an inch off the edge of my board. Okay. And uh, same thing here. This will be a negative number. And that should uh, leave me with an eighth of an inch gap. 16th and 16th is an eighth. An eighth and eighth is uh, minus a quarter is an eighth, right? And uh, so that way I, when I cut these out, I'll get a nice clean edge cut. So um, here, 
we've got those uh, now the fronts and backs we need four of these so there's gonna be two of these tool paths uh, you're gonna run them twice basically on two separate boards and all and uh, it's gonna be a profile cut but let's do the rabbit cut first because on the bottom of each of these we have um, we have a rabbit for the bottom of the drawer box right so that rabbit now that drawer box bottom um, that rabbits only a quarter of an inch deep okay uh, you know uh, for us we're cutting from the flat side down it's three sixteenths of an inch deep uh, and it's a quarter inch wide okay so three sixteenths by a quarter all right so if we come in here we're going to uh, we're going to actually do it right along uh, both of these together so i'm just going to create a single vector to uh, do this and since i need three sixteenths of an inch on each one uh, that is uh, three sixteenths and three sixteenths is six sixteenths uh, which is uh, three eighths, right? So my rectangle needs to be 0.375, and uh, I'm going to let's just go 21 inches, um, and then I'm going to make sure that I'm centered on my material, okay? Cool beans, okay, and um. The, let me think now. Nope, let me look at that the right way. I'm looking at that the wrong way. From here to here, that's a quarter. I need to be a quarter. I'm sorry, I am I was looking at it backwards. 3 16 inch is my depth of cut. My depth of cut. Sorry for that pocket. So let's go back and resize that. That rectangle needs to be on the size um, still 21 but it needs to be a uh, half inch wide quarter and a quarter okay and we have a you know a quarter inch on its width on each side but we remember where there's an eighth inch gap in the middle here right so you got to account for that gap that space so this is 0.625 on that rectangle and from the edge of my part to the inside of that line quarter inch wide from the edge of this part to the inside of this line quarter inch wide that's a pocket cut we're gonna go three sixteenths of an inch deep 0.1875 uh, the quarter inch end mill is fine calculate that preview that visible toolpath so that'll cut the rabbits on uh, both of those parts and then finally we're going to select each of the parts individually we're going to do a profile cut cutting through three eighths of an inch deep the material thickness uh, we're going to use an eighth inch end mill on this one so if you don't have an eighth inch end mill in your arsenal of tools get one they're very useful uh, we're going to be cutting on the outside of the line, and I'm using two-sided tape on all these parts, uh, and uh, uh, so I don't have to do tabs, and I don't have to worry about cleaning up tabs and everything. And all right, now notice here that it did not go into here, right? Even though I have an eighth of an inch bit. And I have an eighth of an inch gap here. Let's measure that again. Uh, vertical from there to there. You know, I've got an eighth of an inch. The bit can fit in there. But the software did not create that tool path. You know, it's saying, hey, you got to give me a little bit of room, you know, and all that. And so we got to kind of, uh, we got to deal with it. So what we're going to do is we've got to make two changes. Number one, I'm just going to bump this up 
and both and down a ten thousandths of an inch, right? So I'm just going to move it relative to its position uh, on the y-axis. I'm going to move it up ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, I'm going to move this one down ten thousandths of an inch. All right. Uh, now I've increased that space. I need to change my size here. I need to add that twenty thousandths of an inch to this pocket so I still get my quarter of an inch cut. So you can't forget that. So on this uh, here, we're going to go into the size tool on this vector that's cutting out that pocket. We've got to account for that extra twenty thousandths of an inch that we just uh, made. So my height, uh, instead of 0.625, it's going to be 0.645. Okay, and we're going to, let's select these two vectors here, finish off this profile cut toolpath, but go back into the pocket and recalculate that as well. All right, so if we preview the toolpaths, these two toolpaths, once again, we'll be running them uh, on two separate boards, the same toolpath on two separate boards. Uh, to create our jaw front and back. So we need four of these boards. Okay. Why can't I use the CNC to cut the miters on the walnut uh, trim edges? Bob, there's nothing stopping you from doing that, but because it is kind of a compound cut, uh, and everything, um, I mean, there's nothing stopping you. Uh, let's revisit that just really quickly to show you that setup. So, um, corner trim, I think is what I called it. <clears throat> On this uh, corner trim here, let's look at uh, the board size was uh, 24 inches in length. Uh, and um, our overall, let's go back to our corner trim, uh, close this, edit, unhide all the corner trim is from long to long is uh, 22 and a quarter inches. Okay, so here. I'm going to take a guideline and uh, we'll take that guideline there and um, 22.25 relative guide. Oops, 22.25. line here um, our miters are going inward right <clears throat> from these locations uh, so <clears throat> excuse me uh, from here uh, we're going to cut 45 degrees spacebar uh, let's make sure let me get my vectors straight here that's my pocket cut that's my profile cut. Uh, let's back that up to there. And um, same thing here. Profile cut uh, to this first line, 45 degrees. Let's see. This line and uh, let's change the uh, cut direction on this one. Let's go into node editing mode. Let's make this the start point. All right, we could select this line here. We could select this line. Profile cut um, 7 eighths of an inch deep, uh, 0.875. Uh, on the outside right of the line, calculate, oops, yep, and 
Uh, let's really quickly just kind of run through these tool paths, preview the visible tool paths. Let's get that eighth of an inch milled off real quick. And uh, Dugan, 22 and a half. Uh, let me see here. Did I measure something wrong? Hold on. Did I get my numbers wrong? 22 and a quarter. Okay, let me know, Dugan, uh, Duggan, Dugan, Duggan, let me know uh, where 22 and a half comes in. Uh, let's uh, turn the tool off so we can speed that cut up. Okay, that's that first pocket cut clearing off that eighth of an inch. Our inside cuts creating the rabbits. Uh, the chamfer or the profile angle cut that would be that toolpath would be before the cutout the final cutout but i have it i created it after the cutout i just didn't move it up in the list um but uh let that cut <clears throat> Make sure your orientation is correct uh, on your parts, uh, that the miters are getting cut in the right direction. I believe uh, my one and five eighths uh, goes down the side, so the miter cut. Um, if that's flipped over 90 degrees, so I think I got this cut backwards, the miter cut backwards. Um, hold on a second, I'll let you know. Let you know in about a second and a half. Um, all right, let's see. Okay, let's uh, get... Tag on it. Undo last. Oh man. Come on. Brother. How come undo last reset the whole thing? Oh, you asshole. Excuse my language. Um here, let's just do this. Preview visible toolpath. Cut out those individual parts. Okay, that profile cut needs to start at an eighth of an inch. I keep forgetting that. Uh, point one, uh, two, five. Because it's a one inch thick part. And there we go. Preview the visible tool path. Okay, now on this part here, I'm going to rotate this around because this bottom edge would be my top piece going into my game area and um and coming down here yeah those minor cuts are right just make sure that you're orientated properly yeah so you can do the miter cuts on there um there's nothing stopping you from that just draw a line it's a profile cut cutting here and cutting here on the outside of the line okay the reason why i changed this start point on this line is because the outside right is the right side of the start and I, when I drew the line I drew it from top to bottom so that made this the start point well if I did outside right it would be cutting on the inside over here so I had to change the start point down here so it cuts on the outside right of that line so when we look at that tool path you know it's cutting on that outside of that line okay so, but you can repeat that all the way down and uh, you would do your miter cuts before you do your final cutout. Nothing wrong with that, right? Cool. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, we just finished up. Let's go out of here and go back to our box sides. Make it visible. Uh, turn off corner trim and back uh, box sides. Note that was a drawer front and back. We need that one. 
active. All right. So we just cut out the two parts for our drawers uh, front and backs. Now we need the sides, the drawer sides. Now the drawer sides, they are a two-sided cut. The job is already set up as a two-sided cut, but these are a two-sided cut. Um, the Let's move this. Oops. Let me select the part and then move it. All right, so we have our three, uh, we got our dado and our two rabbit cuts. And then uh, we have our uh, back channel cut. That's where the drawer goes for the drawer slide. And then we have another uh, rabbit cut here as well on the edge for the bottom of the box. Now the sides rabbits uh they're going to be a quarter of an inch deep by three eighths of an inch wide let's measure that so they are uh three sixteenths inch deep sorry by three eighths of an inch wide okay so um three sixteenths by three eighths the center not center i can't say the word center uh this is going to be three eighths of an inch wide and it starts from the inside of uh, the bottom piece here. Uh, it's four and a half inches into the inside of that cut. Okay, 4.5 in. <clears throat> okay, so um, if this part were laying down on the whoa, CNC, and let's say this was my X minus side. Let's turn this a little bit more. Let's say this was my X minus side. Uh, four and a half inches to the inside of that three eighths inch groove. Okay. Uh, the bottom, whoa, the bottom of the drawer, uh, it is, uh, should only be a quarter of an inch wide. Um, quarter of an inch, yeah, quarter of an inch uh, wide and it should be also uh, 3 16 of an inch deep. Okay, 3 16 deep, one quarter wide. Okay, so for us, because uh, we're laying on its side, it's cutting 3 16 of an inch deep on a quarter inch wide on that bottom cut. All right, overall length on this board from long to long is 10 and 7 eighths inches. Ten and seven eighths inches. And we need uh, four of these as well. So we'll create the, um, and also they are uh, overall as uh, two and five eighths, just like our other board, right? Two and five eighths. Uh, so we need four of these as well. So we're going to create the tool path for one, and uh, then we'll um, we'll uh, this will wrap it up as far as the parts that need to be cut. Besides, besides the door fronts, the bottom panel is uh, just a quarter inch panel um, that uh, is uh, just a, a three sixteenths inch panel. Um, could be a quarter if it's a quarter adjust your tool path accordingly uh, and then the center divider is just a piece of material that is uh, also um, oops two and five two and three eighths inches tall uh, it's going to sit just right on there's no groove cut in it's just sitting right on that panel because uh, this is going to be flopped and everything so i don't need to really recess it in so two and three eighths inches by um, twenty and eight. So twenty eight by two and three eighths. So those three, those parts, the bottom panel, the two bottom panels of the drawers, and the two dividers, I don't need to deal with. The sides, those are the final cuts um, and 
once again uh, on the back side when we flip this over this groove here is an eighth inch deep and it is uh, half inch wide uh, right down the center of that part okay so let's sit up that and that'll be the last part for the evening and uh, that will complete uh, let's see this is going to be a our drawer sides um, we can go with the same 24 inch by five and a half inch piece uh, by three-eighths of an inch thick material okay so the material is three-eighths yep so that's good uh, same as our front and back, you know, our drawer front and back, so nothing, no problem there. So when you're milling up your material to get it down to three, it's whatever, you need uh, one, two, three, four of those boards. Four of these boards of that same size. All right, let's draw this out. Um, okay, now on this one, it's going to be a two-sided job. So uh, first things first, um, Let's go with our overall length, once again, which was uh, 10 and 7 eighths. Okay, so let's go to our size here, rectangle. So the overall is uh, 10.875, and the height was uh, 2 and 5 eighths, just like our other part. All right, 2. 2.625 all right so that'll be one side and um, we need two of these now there's enough room just like we did before with these two parts right nothing changes we can do the same kind of setup there uh, and um, actually we can do all four parts on this one board for the drawers front and, uh, the two sides so let's uh i'm gonna bring this up to the edge oh sorry my i was holding my uh i wasn't snapping because i was holding my shift key for some reason okay so and i'm gonna bring it down once i get my other part in there i'm gonna hold down the control key and snap this one to this edge um and uh I'm going to just throw an eighth inch, not a quarter inch, point one, two, five, eighth inch. Uh, let me center that up and down. There we go. All right. Now, I'm just going to take this and drag it straight down and snap it to that. And then I'm going to um, move it up that 20 thousandths of an inch. Remember? Uh, so that, that little extra space we need for the bit. Okay. Same thing here. I'm going to grab this and snap it to there. That eighth of an inch. This represents kind of my bit cutting down the middle. And I'm going to move it down that 20 thousandths of an inch. Or not 20, 10 thousandths, Laney. 10 thousandths. Uh, 10. Let me move this one back down. Okay. So that'll give me a clearance, uh, you know, for that cut. Now I need uh, four of these, so I can actually copy these over. Hold down my alternate key to keep it on the same plane there. Oh, I was holding the shift, not the control key. Control and alternate key, there we go. The alternate key just keeps me in line All right, so uh, I can now center these. There we go. All right, so um, to do all four drawer sides, I only need one board to do that. Uh, so I will need a total of three of these boards, one for the drawer sides and two boards for the front and backs. Cool, can't beat that. All right. All right, let's go ahead and draw out the vectors for our tool pass. Uh, the inside bottoms here, I'm going to make those the uh, bottoms of the drawers so I can cut them all in one pocket just like we did 
you know, uh, in the uh, drawer front and back with that one vector. Um, the rectangle. <clears throat> Okay. All right, my rectangle size, uh, remember my rabbits are a quarter of an inch uh, wide, basically by three sixteenths of an inch deep. So uh, these need to be my half inch plus that extra eighth, right? So that's five eighths, and then you gotta add in that 20,000, so 0. 0.645. You should remember that number from the last board we did, right? So uh, 0. 0.645, uh, we're gonna size that up, and I'm gonna make sure it's centered on the material, there we go. And so that's gonna take care of the bottoms of the drawers, okay? The inside bottom of the drawers um, for uh, this side. Now, uh, I'm going to consider the left side of these boards my drawer, uh, kind of the fronts, if you will. Uh, you know, the side that um, the, uh, well, this here is going to be, when I take these two parts, think of a V, like they're laying here like this. When I bring them up side by side, that's my two sides. So the top two vectors are going to be one drawer. The bottom two vectors are going to be one drawer. And, um, you know, this area here and this area here, those inside areas, that when I flip them up to that V, that's the front of my drawer. The top of my hand is the back of the drawer, right? So if you remember from the front of the drawer back four and a half inches, I have that center groove. So I need to go back four and a half inches for that center groove and everything in there. That's why I'm doing that. All right, so first things first, 3 8 inch rabbits on the end. So let's come here. This is going to be a total width of 0.375. Okay. And uh, let's snap it to that corner. Going to... I'm going to hold down the control key. There's no sense in me in redrawing it because it's there. So and I'm going to snap it to make sure you hold the control key and snap it to that corner. Now I want the bit to kind of clear out these rabbits nicely and all. So on these parts, they're going to extend slightly over here and I'm going to hold the shift key this time and extend that. Oops. Let's do that again shift key and extend that out so it does both sides at the same time right here so that'll be one uh, this one here same thing I'm gonna hold the shift key and pull it out at the top so it does it evenly at the bottom as well and then let go of the shift key and pull this out just a little bit so my bit can clean up those rabbits all right uh, now um, the cuts here we also have those same rabbit cuts on the end uh, so I'm gonna grab this I'm gonna hold down the control key and I'm literally going to uh, snap this edge to this end right here okay let me do that again something is a crooked foot hold on a minute this one all right, those two aren't lined up really quickly. That's very important. Make sure your vectors are lined up. So I'm gonna select this bottom drawer vector here. I'm gonna hold down the shift key, select the top drawer vector, and I'm gonna use the alignment tool and align side to side. Get those things lined up. Let me check this other side here. This one, this one, and align side to side. There we go very important now that that's changed this shifted in a little bit uh, I want to make sure that uh, you know everything lines up perfectly this has to be 3 8 what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to snap this edge to that edge right there and I'm just gonna move it back over 3 8 of an inch okay so that way I get my 3 8 of an inch right with my little overcut um, this one here, I'll do the same thing on this end. 
just snap this to the corner and then a negative 3 eighths. I got to go to the left, negative 0.375. Okay. On this end here, this rectangle, it's already snapped to the end of my board. I just need to move it to the right, positive 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, to create that pocket. And if all of these parts are centered, I should be able to mirror that part over there. And uh, just for kicks and giggles, I'm gonna take my measure tool and measure from here to there, and I'm at 3 eighths, so I'm good. So it mirrored perfect because my parts were centered. That is my vectors for my outside rabbits, okay? And now we need from, remember the, the, the this insides here, those are my drawer fronts. Remember that folding up like a V, these are gonna be my fronts. So from the front back of the rabbit to the inside uh, four and a half inches um, is where the my uh, three eighths inch uh, little uh, middle divider uh, pocket goes. So, Let's uh, take and, matter of fact, um, let's go three eighths of an inch wide, 0.375. That did not change. Let's try that again. 0.375 apply. Always helpful when you do that. And uh, I'm going to just bring it out to the edge there and it's already the edge there now all I'm gonna do uh, this vector right here represents the back of my rabbit cut so I'm gonna take this vector I'm gonna snap it right to the back of that cut and then I'm gonna move it over to the left it's a negative number negative 4.5 inches okay and uh, that'll give me my divider space if you want to validate or verify that, uh, we can take our measure tool here horizontally from here to there, four and a half inches. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. I'm actually going to borrow this vector. Uh, no sense in me redrawing things. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to make a copy. The control key allows me to make a copy, and I'm going to snap it right to the outside of that or you know inside of that lip if you will and again I'm gonna move that one four and a half inches 4.5 positive number because we're going to the right this time all right that is the vectors all four side one hopefully you guys are with me on that okay would it be better to cut the miter before the pockets uh, to provide support Bob yeah that's fine you can cut that miter any direction any way you want to either before or after uh, but uh, if you want to prevent chip out and stuff like that, do it before. Uh, that's going to, you know, the uh, if there's any chip out or anything, uh, do it before. That way when the pocket comes, it cleans all that, that up, right? So do it before. You do those uh, pockets to create those L shapes. Do the miters before. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's create our tool pass. Now, each of these pockets... All three of these pockets uh, are a total of three eighths of an inch deep, or three sixteenths of an inch deep. I keep saying three sixteenths. My whole part is three eighths. Uh, three sixteenths of an inch deep. So I'm going to select this, 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 that, that, and that. Uh, pocket cut one eight seven five. Um, quarter inch end mill, raster cut. I'm gonna do it as an offset. It'll be a little click quicker and cleaner. Uh, calculate that. Preview that visible tool path. Okay, that's gonna create those cuts there. Awesome blossom. Now, uh, two of the vectors right here, that and that didn't clean up on that edge. Uh, that's because, and yep, let's do that. Let's fix that right now. Uh, I'm going to hold down the shift key and extend that out to that edge. 
this one here extend it out to that edge of that board just to get past and the same thing with this one here holding the shift key does both ends at the same time all right we're gonna recalculate that tool path get in here and uh, preview that visible tool path and that should clean that up I still got a radius so I got to go a little bit further Um, let's just take this, hold the shift key down, that, that, and that. Hold down the shift key and pull them all up. And there we go. All right, one more time. Calculate that tool path. Are they not centered? Hold on, they're not centered. Hold on a minute there, Hoss. Uh, align up and down. Oh, don't do it that way, Laney. Select this one. Align up and down on the material. This one, align up and down on the material. That one, align up and down. Let me get these recentered. Bear with me. I'm up and down on the material. Okay. All right. Which one's short? This one. I need to come up to there. Okay. Better. These two. Let's do them one at a time because obviously I'm. This one, and finally that one's good. Okay, one more time, open that up and calculate that tool path. What I wanna see is when these uh, cuts get made, I don't wanna see any little radiuses like we have here. I want a nice, clean, uh, straight pocket cut. Okay, I don't wanna have to do any chisel work when it's all said and done. All right, so that is uh, side one, okay, for that. Uh, now, my bottom drawer rabbit cut, okay, that is going to be um, this cut right, right here, and it's 3 16 of an inch deep, okay, so... Pocket tool path, 3 16 of an inch deep, calculate. Preview that visible tool path. That's going to do the bottoms. Okay. Cool beans. Um, the profile cut, we're going to do this uh, on side two, that channel that gets cut out on side two. I'm actually going to cut side two first, just that eighth inch channel, you know, and then flip the material over and uh, then cut all of these with one, you know, they all use the same bit. So one tool path, uh, they don't use the same bit. I'm sorry. Um, do they all use hold on, quarter, quarter, and then an eighth to cut them out? Um, uh, I'm going to do this side last, if you will. Uh, I want to do that little channel on the on the front first. So on this side, I'll go ahead and create the profile toolpath. Profile cut. Um, cutting three eighths of an inch deep, eighth inch end mill, outside right of the line. Calculate. And uh, let's preview it, even though it's not a finished part yet. Okay, so top boards, uh, those are my one drawer. The bottom boards are my other drawer sides and everything. Uh, so these will get 
literally flipped in like that. The bottom grooves will line up. Those two center channel grooves and all that stuff will line up. So all those parts will, uh, for the box sides, are done there. Um, anything that you think you need tabs on and all, because you're not going to use two-sided tape. I don't want to have to deal with sanding tabs and all, so I'm going to use two-sided tape for this uh, to hold this material down. So when it cuts out, I can just peel off the tape and uh, I'm ready to go and all. But whatever you feel comfortable with. All right, now let's actually, you know, this would be the second. We would cut this second. Uh, so what's important is let's switch over to uh, side two here. And on side two, we have a, um, oops, we have a channel here that is, uh, let's get there, a uh, half inch wide by an eighth inch deep, okay? And it's in the center of the drawer. So uh, let me verify that before I uh, talk too soon. Uh, so one and a sixteenth. One and a sixteenth. Okay, it is centered. That's good. That's a good thing. Um, let's go back to our metric here. Okay, so we have a, a groove, a rectangle, basically. Uh, it's going to be a half inch wide. Okay, uh, it is going to be, um, our whole board is uh, 24. I wanna, uh, I've got uh, plenty of room on the ends and all, so I don't need to be, let's go uh, 23. That's good. And let's align it to the center of our material. Nice, nice. All right, now this side, we would also have alignment pins because we're gonna flip this board over, right? So uh, we're gonna use alignment pins to help us out. So we're gonna take, and I, my alignment pins are quarter inch dowels, so I'm gonna use a quarter inch diameter hole. Uh, I'm gonna just throw one, we'll do one up here, right there. And I'm gonna throw one down here, it doesn't matter really where, and my very first tool path is going to be this cut, this drilling operation. So I'm going to drill this and uh, remember my board's only uh, 3 eighths of an inch thick. Um, so uh, my dowels, now my dowels that I have that I have pre-cut for alignment pins, because uh, I use steel ones uh, instead of wooden ones, uh, they're, they're a half inch, right? Uh, and normally I cut a three eighths inch uh, hole on the board and then a quarter inch hole in my waste board. So that way I have, uh, you know, that little bit of room to play around with. And um, uh, the, uh, so when I drill this, uh, it's gonna kinda wanna drill all the way through. So I'm not gonna go uh, three eighths on this. I'm gonna go a quarter, but I'm actually gonna go just slightly because my pins are perfectly one half inch, right? So if I just go just a few thousandths of an inch more, then I will be able to seat that on. Uh, so I'll go uh, like, you know, point to, uh, I don't know, uh, 20 thousandths, 0.27 on these holes in the board and 0.27 on my waste board. Uh, that'll give me about four thousandths of an inch to play with and I'll be fine there. So I'm going to go 0.27. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. Uh, I'm going to do pecking just to create a nice clean hole. This is going to be my board alignment holes. I'll actually name this one so I know what it is. Okay. And so reset this back to a blank board reset that back to a blank board um so that's going to be the first tool path that gets you know cut with my quarter inch end mill uh is that alignment hole then there's going to be the pocket cut right so we have the pocket cut uh it's cutting a uh eighth inch deep now you can you can go a little bit deeper not much a little bit deeper 
Um, but don't. Okay. Um, because this is a three-eighths inch board, right? Uh, the depth of cut is three-eighths of an inch. And we're cutting an eighth of an inch deep here. And on the back side, the other side, let's flip it over real quick. These pocket cuts here, uh, they are cutting uh, 3 16 So um, that only leaves us a 16th of an inch between those two cuts. Okay. So if you must only go a few thousands or something, don't go too crazy because then we'll cut through and it'll be no good. All right, so that pocket cut is going to be uh, cutting an eighth inch deep. And um, do an offset cut is fine. Quarter inch end mill, calculate. Let's select the vector. It would help uh, and calculate that. Preview that visible tool path. Okay, so those are the two cuts. Now, once these two cuts get finished then the board will get moved out of the way and I will be uh, cutting the alignment holes in the waste board right uh, then I'll flip this board over stick it on the pins on that waste board but um, so for side two uh, first of all let's take our two circles here this one and this one. And copy them to the other side. Okay, so when we flip over here, they're there. Now these are gonna cut into the waste board. Now, I'm not gonna need to reset my Z, okay? Uh, on my waste board or anything. I'm still using the same bit, same quarter inch end mill that cut those two alignment holes in the board and cut that groove. So when I unclamp the board and move it out of the way, um, I just need to make sure I have a start depth that will bring my bit down to the waste board before it drills that quarter inch hole. And my material is three eighths of an inch thick. So I'm going to start at 0.375 on this and I'm gonna cut down 0.27. From there and I'm gonna calculate that and so if we flip this over here and let's zoom in come on come on so my tool is uh, simulating you know like if that board was still sitting there you know on top of my waste board uh, my bit is cutting, you know, basically through that board and then 0.27 into the waste board, right? I want it to cut it in the waste board. Well, this board's not going to be there. It's going to be moved out of the way. I just don't want to have to re-zero my Z on my waste board and then run that tool path. I'm just going to create the start depth. I don't have to change anything with my bit. Just uh, run the tool path. So this tool path here is going to be my waste board. Waste board alignment holes and that's going to be the very first tool path I run once I run that tool path and it cuts the two alignment holes I then take my board flip it over and for me I'm flipping along the y-axis uh, put my pins in my waste board press that board down in there and uh, I'm ready to cut um, you know side two and so side two Let's get back here. Uh, my second side, uh, after the wasteboard holes get cut and everything, uh, it's going to cut through. Uh, it's going to come and cut the uh, channels, the grooves, and then cut out the parts. Right? Cool. All right. So uh, all with the same bit except for the eighth. The very last bit is the eighth inch end mill. But, um, you know... Uh, we're missing, hold on a minute. I did that wrong, ladies and gentlemen. On side two, someone, did anyone catch me? No one catched me, no one caught me. Uh, on this one here, that eighth inch groove needs to be, there needs to be two of them in the center of my drawers, <laughs> not in the center of my board. 
uh, my drawers. Uh, so I'm gonna steal the profile vector for this one and this one. I'm gonna copy them to the other side for myself. Uh, that way I have something to align to. And I'm gonna take this vector and my profile vector and align it up and down so it's centered there. And I'm gonna hold down my control key, drag a copy down use my alternate key to keep it in line there alternate helps me keep it in line up and down and again i'm going to select this vector now and align up and down so it's centered there and i didn't hold the control key laney i held the shift key let's do that one more time make sure it's the control key control makes a copy there we go all right one more time select this vector first Select this vector second, align up and down, perfect. And that pocket toolpath needs to be on these vectors here. Calculate, almost screwed that up. All right, uh, let's um, delete. I don't need these vectors anymore on this side in here. All right, one more time, let's reset that preview. Uh, on this side here, we have our visible toolpath that's going to uh, cut out those um, two grooves on the back side. Uh, it's also going to cut out our alignment holes on the board. The board's going to get moved out of the way. Uh, we're going to run the wasteboard alignment holes to cut our pin holes in our wasteboard. This board gets flipped over and uh, we run our end mill cuts here. To cut those parts out wonderful two-sided tape whatever you want to use to hold it down um, and your drawer should have the grooves in the middle of them like that there we go that looks much better all right and that completes our drawer boxes minus uh, just that center divider rail which is just a square board um, our bottom panel of our two drawers that bottom panel uh, is, what is it? Uh, 10 and a half by uh, 20 and an eighth. And so there's two of those. And that completes the box, all the parts we need for the box uh, and everything. Um, then it comes a matter of doing some assembly. If you don't do your miter cuts on the CNC, uh, you do them on a miter box, cut your miters uh, and um, and all. But uh, yeah, so let's unhide, edit, unhide all of these parts. And uh, I'm going to uh, do a little bit of undoing here. I want to kind of get everything back to my original state there. Okay. I want to get everything back to the way it was just for, bear with me just a moment. Um, I'm just going to keep control Z, get that back. Okay, and let me grab this drawer here and move it. That's going to slide right in there. Slide in. Okay, and then uh, so that'll oops, slide in there. Come on now, don't don't get shaky there. All right, so. Um, That'll be the drawer. And that will complete the layout of the chessboard. Now, if anyone's interested, I can clean up all these files and make the files available to you. Guys, if it's something that you wanna try to uh, attempt and tackle, uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, no nails, Brooks Martin, no nails. You glue your assembly together. Uh, Tight bond two wood glue is just fine. 
uh, gluing clamp your uh, box parts uh, together but no nails don't 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 put any the only hardware that should be in this box is uh, the knobs that's it all right um, please unhide all and let me take uh, really quickly okay um, I'm doing this because YouTube uh, the last screen on the on the stream is what they usually make your thumbnail so I'm gonna <laughs> but uh, so yeah no no um, yes uh, the fancy where what were the fancy decorations you were gonna do on the worksheet yes uh, we will uh, it's 1020 we've gone really long enough and everything but uh, this is supposed to be a Greek inspired uh, box so uh, on our sheets here uh, the two side the box sides the box sides um, not my drawers make sure it's make sure I'm looking at my drawer Make sure I'm looking at my uh, drawer front and back, drawer sides, box sides, box sides. Uh, so these sides right here, okay? This area right here, all right? Um, in that, uh, let me turn this off, this off, this off, and make this active. Um, here we go. We have a couple of... Uh, uh, options for some v-card patterns now this pattern right here uh, is size let me select it all uh, it is sized to fit um, it's a uh, 3 and uh, 7 16 by 19.8997 um, but it is sized when it's carved that this area right here in this area right here uh, will be inside of these corner pieces these maple corner pieces so that carving will be right in here this whole side on the box and uh, it's a uh, simple uh, V carve so we can talk about that more in next week class we'll kind of touch up on it but uh, this is a repeatable pattern um, so this pattern has been copied and duplicated over and over again to create, you know, a symmetrical repeatable pattern. We can go as long as we want or as high. Uh, let me turn off the border here. Um, and, uh, let's see that vector needs to be closed. Uh, bear with me a second. Let me do a little bit of trimity, trim, 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 uh, scissors. I need to trim that, 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 all the way over to here, that, 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 and that. All right. And that, that, get rid of that. <clears throat> okay. So this pattern, it's a simple V-carve pattern. And uh, we're going to zero start depth, uh, 60 degree V-bit, no eighth inch end mill, um, calculate, oops, I got eight, eight open vectors, bear with me, let me close them up real quick. Um, so the first open vector is going to be here, uh, hold down the shift key, turn that off, and hit delete. Select that one, hit delete. Uh, there are overlaps on this line right here. Nope, not there, not there. Right click, select. Where's our selection? All open vectors. All right, that is, how many vectors is that? Five open vectors. Ah, there's my, I got an overlap there as well too. All right. Delete that. 
I get quite a few of those. Bear with me a second. Hold down the shift key. Turn that off. Select all of them. Turn that off. Oh, you son of a gun. I know you're hiding there. Uh, let me go back in here. One open vector. Where are you hiding at? Right there. Turn that off. Okay, that is a big overlap. I got to go to node editing on that one. Uh, and um, this vector here is this long line is overlapping right there. So I need to delete that span. And uh, then there's another one. Where are you at? He's on the left hand side. I can tell by the darker line over here if I go into node editing and I pull this out. There he is. Uh, so I need to delete that span. Oops, not that one. Um, it's this span right here that I need to delete. And this one and this one. I'm going to hit the letter X to line that back up. And that should be a closed vector now. Okay, let's see. What about this one? Same thing in node editing. If I pull this in a little bit, there's a vector right there. I can just hit delete to get rid of that. There's another one. And then I need to bring this back into alignment. So if I select this node first, this node second, I need to go X axis. So I hit the X on my keyboard and that'll pull that back in alignment. And that one's closed. Okay, I should have no more open vectors. Right click, select all open vectors. Okay, it's saying that I still have one more somewhere. Select all open vectors. Zoom to selected. Right there. Uh, let's identify that so you can see if I pull that out, you can see that line right there. Right? So I'll delete that span. Okay, select all open vectors. There should be none in that design. So my hastiness uh, made a mess for myself. All right, calculate this toolpath and uh, preview that visible toolpath. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's uh, make this our walnut. Point three. Um, and, uh, let's, uh, you know, this cut here, uh, could be done as a V carve. Um, it could be, you know, uh, you know, inlaid in as well. That could be a very nice inlay cut with some maple on the sides of the box. Uh, it could be just carved and, you know, just for the detail either way. Um, but, uh, I would probably add one thing to this. I'd probably add one of these lines, not both. I want to give it a little bit of differentiation. Uh, I'd probably add, if I hold down the control key on this one here, I'd probably bring that down a uh, control key, uh, to bring a copy right down about there. And I would add that in there, kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of balance and stuff. But uh, those two maple pieces are gonna go those corner parts. Um, these corner parts right here. Oh, come on now. They're gonna go right up to that edge right here. So that'll cover up that bare spot there and that bare spot there in that corner and there'd be a nice decorative decoration. Uh, there's two different patterns that I chose for this. This this uh, Grecian pattern here and also this one as well. Either one of the two would look really nice and they would look nice as a V carve or they would look nice as a uh, an inlay to a V carve inlay. The same way we kind of did the V carve inlay on the top. Uh, a nice maple inlay in there would really be classy uh, and stuff. And um, we will cover that 
Uh, we'll do a V-carve inlay uh, next week uh, when we talk about tomorrow's class. Uh, next week's class. Next week's class is going to be a QA and a because uh, we covered a lot of stuff in this class and the chess piece class and some past classes. So next week we're going to do just an open Q&A. We'll work on show you a V-carve inlay, how to do this uh, on this on this uh, project type here. Um, but uh, any questions you have, you ask, I answer. Next week is a Q&A class. Okay. Uh, yeah, an inlay would look really nice as that um, uh, for that detail. Imagine that being the you know the side of your box. And uh, I can't really simulate an inlay, but imagine, you know, that light maple inlay to match the rest of your box. Uh, that's what it would kind of look like, right? You know, uh, really, really would look sharp. Uh, and it would be on both sides of the box. Uh, here and here. And if... If you wanted to do something on the jaw front, this panel here, you could. Just remember now, it's only an eighth inch thick. So, you know, um, uh, I think the two side details would be really nice. Now, one of the thing, other things that I thought about is on the top here, these two and a half inch squares. Um, I thought about, uh, let me see what sheet that's on bear with me I might have deleted it no nope, it's right here what sheet is that graphics uh, let me make graphics uh, active uh, this vector here I thought about uh, seeing what that would look like uh, v-carved into the top of these squares you know after the inlay was done uh, carving that design in the top of the squares you know so imagine if you will uh, this being two and a half by two and a half 2.5 and let me bring it down here uh, we could go a little bit or I'm gonna go just a, I'm gonna go 2.47 just a little inside there and uh, if that was a V carve uh, I would use a 22 degree V bit for that not a 60 I would use a 22 degree because it's real small lines and stuff. And imagine if you will, this pattern on those squares uh, just kind of engraved in there. Um, what's my simulation for? Let's turn that up so we can get a little bit clearer picture of that. There we go. But that uh, being carved on those squares to give it a nice little decorative, each of the squares a nice little tile. Um, you know, a uh, little uh, nice little look. And I thought about, you know, would I do it on all the squares or would I do it just on the maple or just the walnut or, or uh, you know, what have you. Um, you know, but it would just get carved, you know, in here just to give the top a little bit of after the inlay is done. Come back and do that nice little V carve to kind of just give it a nice little detail. Uh, and um, just a nice little detail. You know. Uh, I don't know. You know, that's optional. But the sides definitely would, uh, would really pop as well. Okay. So that was what the decorative sides were and everything. Uh, guys, I appreciate you. We've been going for three hours and 20 minutes. Uh, we are going to call it a night. We'll touch up. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll do some little wrap up or touch up on uh, next week when we do the Q and A. I'll kind of uh, have some things cleaned up, and uh, I will have uh, this whole project 
uh, all of the sheets uh, laid out, uh, all of the tool paths laid out, named and organized, all the layers or whatever, you know, uh, sheets and all. Uh, and I will have it available for a download um, uh, for you guys. And, uh, you know, so uh, I'll work on that and get it cleaned up really well, get it organized really well. Uh, and, uh, and I'll have it as available as a download. Um, uh, Dugan, uh, my email address, uh, am I saying that right, Dugan? Make sure I'm saying that right. Or is it Duggan? Uh, but, uh, my email address is laney.shaughnessy at spindletv.com. It's in the chat area there. All right. Uh, so we had a long long class uh i think i don't think i i didn't pay attention i got tired of paying attention to the buffering i don't think i buffered too much after we got rolling i don't know i might have you might let me know uh but uh, uh i wasn't looking at the screen because i i knew it would kind of screw up my flow um but uh i think we did okay i think we made it through uh i really appreciate you hanging out with me and uh dealing with the technical issues i will get those figured out uh i'm gonna have a heart to heart with uh some youtube people and see what i can find out uh, and, um, the, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, this is going to, this would look nice. Uh, and I think, um, the, uh, pattern, uh, whichever, e either one, either this, uh, kind of, uh, shell pattern or even this, uh, kind of a palm or floral pattern. Uh, I'll have a tool path laid out for this next week too so you can see it as well. And I'll show you how to do a V-carve and I'll also show you how we take a item like this and size it up and then copy it over and clean up the vectors to create that continuous uh, um, end to end carving uh, where um, you know you can you can run that down any length of trim or panel or whatever you're doing. We'll talk about that next week and all too. Uh, and stuff, how to take a simple pattern and make it a repeatable and how to clean up between those repeats. All right. All right, guys and girls, until next time, we made it through. Thank you very much. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you.